Mike. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the prayer and the pledge by Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte. We'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Pro Chamber King Oslin. Present. Councilmember Brooke Marcotte. Here. Councilmember Marlon Lewis. Here. Councilmember David Broussard. Here. Councilmember Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Councilmember Dee Dee Johnson Reeves. Here. Councilmember Dan Dahl. Here. Thank you. Item one, public comment. Do we have any comment cards? Seeing none, that's the time that I ask you to put your phones on vibrator silent. And we'll move on to item two A. Acceptance of the minutes, regular meeting of April 2nd, 2024, which were published on April 10th, 2024. I need a motion. So move. Second. So moved by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsalab with a second by Councilman Marlon Lewis. Is there any discussion of our regular meeting of April the 2nd of the minutes? Hearing seeing none, then I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you. Item 3A. Uh, Warren White to announce his candidacy, candidacy for New Iberia City Councilman representing District 2. My name is Warren White. I come and announce my candidacy for running for the Councilman for the Council District 2. And I've come out before the Council and the community to let know I'll be out there running for this district because I know Marlon is termed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And then um, I want to thank my family for coming out to support me, who always support me on everything I do. If you can't vote for me, pray for me. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> Item 3B. Dean and Catherine Watney to announce the 2024 Bayou Side Run as well as Mental Health Awareness Month. Hi, it's that time of year. <laughs> We're here again. Uh, so uh, May is the uh, month of uh, mental health awareness. And so uh, in connection with that, we always um, try to appear before you all to remind the public of the importance of good mental health. It affects everyone. Um, there are a lot of stresses out there and affects some people more than others. And um, this run is a way to raise that awareness and to help hopefully erase the stigma of seeking help when needed. So our Bayou Side Run is coming up May 4th, uh, Saturday, the Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock. And so it's, you know, easy to remember, may the 4th be with you, right? So, <clears throat> and along with you are other people running in support of others and running by someone's side in support of mental health. So it's been uh, a good experience for us. Uh, this will be the fourth year. The city has partnered with us and has been very supportive. And uh, you, you all need to know about how well the mayor's office and the department's recreation department, police department, have done in connection with this race. They, they've been fantastic and so cooperative. So we're going to start at the Steamboat Warehouse and uh, run through the city and end up back behind the Steamboat Warehouse again. Uh, there'll be, uh, th this is a, an event as well as a run. Uh, and some of you, Ricky's run in it. And he's had a good time. And we want to thank uh, not only the city, but some the city council members who have supported this cause as well. So um, it's, it's an event. There are people who walk um, with others by their side in recognition, perhaps of someone uh, who may have had mental health issues or a family member that may have had those issues. So um, we have some uh, uh, food and entertainment. We have a Cajun band. 
Uh, so, and like I said, it's an event. It's not just a race. Uh, we hope to have, uh, last year we had over 400 registered. We hope to have a good number this year. Uh, it's a lot of fun to just come out and cheer them on. I think we're going to have cheerleaders even this time when you cross the finish line, Ricky. <laughs> so um, um, hopefully um, we'll have a, a good weather and good participation, and you all are invited to come out and uh, participate or to support others. Uh, Catherine uh, wants to tell you a little bit about what we're doing with some of the funds that we raise uh, from the race. Yes, uh, one thing uh, we did during the holidays was uh, to have digital billboards that reminded people to have a mentally healthy holiday. Of course, everybody knows how stressful that time of the year is, so um, that was just a reminder that we had on, on billboards. Another project uh, we are into is a buddy bench and for the schools. And we have uh, three benches placed at uh, schools in Iberia, uh, one at Johnston Hopkins, one at North Lewis, and one at Highland. And the teachers will be uh, in service on um, the meaning of the buddy bench and how to explain uh, its, its purpose to the students. And uh, what it will be will be a place where a child, if they're feeling lonely and left out, they can go sit on the bench and others will know to come and engage them and have them join in, in their activities. And it'll be good for combating loneliness and isolation in the child, and it'll also be good in teaching students about empathy for others. So um, we, we have those three. We're hoping with more uh, profits and donations and sponsorships to have enough to put more benches at other schools. But uh, that's, that's what we're working on, and we have plans for another program in early fall for uh, the community. So we appreciate all your support. We appreciate the city support in the past three years, and we look forward to seeing everybody uh, on Saturday, May 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all y'all do. Y'all have been uh, tirelessly working, you know, toward this mental health in this initiative, and uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. Good. It's also a fun event. Yeah. All right. Item 3C. Back Mitchell to address the council regarding the National Day of Prayer. Uh, good evening, council. Uh, thank you again. <coughs> Uh, it's been a while since I've been before you, and um, hopefully we, it, it's starting a, another run, another good run in some things. I, I want to present two events to you and mention a third. <clears throat> First of all, uh, you do have folders uh, with flyers in it, and you'll probably see that you have some clip flyers uh, asking that you would, uh, you know, give those out to some constituents, et cetera. But let me... Uh, let me go through uh, just the first one. Uh, we're talking about uh, the uh, National National Day of Prayer, National Day of Prayer uh, that is coming up on May May second, May second, the National Day of Prayer, which will be at the Steamboat Pavilion, uh, and we uh, uh, begin at noon. Want to mention that Highland Baptist is uh, as they do every year do the prayer breakfast at 7 a.m. And uh, you all invited. Uh, we, we being the Iberia Christian Ministerial Federation, uh, do the noon uh, prayer. And so uh, I want to say a little bit more about that uh, before I get down. Uh, secondly, on uh, May the 18th, May the 18th, uh, we're doing an event that is an international event, but in this country, uh, it, uh, it uh, has the whole country. Uh, it's a march for Jesus. It's a march for Jesus. And uh, uh, it's, as I said, it was an in, it's an international event. But uh, at 10 o'clock, the march will start. It'll start uh, on Main Street up near Torita Village and go down Main Street and make a right on Bridge Street and 
then make a right on Marie Street and come into City Park. Uh, this event uh, is celebrated in all the time zones, so everybody has a time of 10 a.m. Of course, so uh, when when we begin ours, the Eastern Eastern time zone have have completed there. So uh, this is going to be an event uh, that is going to be tremendous. Uh, when you get on the site, uh, it'll be hard pressed for you to find another location in Louisiana that does this. New Iberia is the only event that's listed, and you have to register. And it's it's totally uh, uh, formal. You have to register, but New Iberia is the only uh, city that we know of that is doing it in Louisiana. Hopefully, before that time, someone else will be. And then, thirdly, we have uh, what's com something coming for our families. It's a conference on the uh, 11th of May. It's called Kingdom Family Matters. And it's focused on, on really helping the family in various different stages, whether it's children, uh, youth, young adults. It's, uh, and it comes to us from uh, St. Mary Parish. We went down and shared with them. So now they're coming in to share with us. Uh, and it is a tremendous blessing for the community. Uh, and so we... We, uh, we are encouraging you to be a part of that uh, May 11th from 9 to 3 there at the Sliman Theater. Let me just, before I go to take my seat, I want to say this about the uh, National Day of Prayer and, and prayer in general. Many people feel as though that when you've prayed about a situation, well, you know, it's done. But what if you're looking for a yes from God, and the answer from God is no. What do you do then? Uh, and, and so I want to dispel that, and I want to dispel this, this sense of prayer in our city. Many people have said, uh, you spiritual leaders and pastors, you're on the ground. We need you on the ground, but we, we don't need the pastors because things are still happening. Things are going to happen because our prayer is not focused on the thing stopping. Our prayer is focused on the people, on the people. And so uh, that's, that's what we focus on. Uh, there's been a lot of ill statements said about that and uh, just wanted to, uh, as president of the Iberia Christian Ministry Federation, to allow you to know that we are still on the ground praying and doing those things that change the mindset, change the culture in our city because that has to happen. And I, I really want to thank the mayor as well as the council because they do support us in all that we do. If you don't see a change, trust me, there is an atmosphere of spiritual happenings that we can't see with our eye. And the only way that we can impact that is spiritual. Last thing, uh, many say it takes a village to raise a child. I say to you, yeah, it does, but the village has to cooperate. It takes the spiritual leaders, it takes the political leaders, and it takes the community to do so. And that's what we are encouraging, participation, collaboration, and coming on board to make this city what it really, really is. Thank you, I so appreciate you. We pray for you and stay in the game and stay the course. Madam Clerk, 3D. Sheriff Tommy Romero to discuss the parish-wide law enforcement district proposition to be considered by voters on the April 28, 2024 ballot. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Thank the council for allowing me to have maybe a few minutes so I can kind of explain why I'm here to talk to you this evening. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I didn't know you were term limited. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you don't have to worry about opposition, right? <laughs> well, I hear you. I you. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, in 2019, I ran for sheriff. I wanted to win the seat for sheriff so that I could bring some change to the image of the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office. Um, if you have not been to our new facility at 4701 
West Admiral Dahl Drive, you're doing yourself an injustice. You need to go take a look at it. It spews and spells out and really uh, lightens the area up with true professionalism. You need to come pass by and take a look at the new building. I uh, want to thank Parish Council for helping us get that building, securing the building. It gives me a better opportunity to work out of a better facility. The men and women of the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office thank them as well. Uh, besides the new building, we uh, I wanted to go ahead and make sure that all my patrol officers and employees at the sheriff's office had the right equipment. And some of that, some of that equipment is an updated comms communication system that we just recently installed, thanks to our legislators that came back with the 375,000 allowed us to install this new communication system that allows us also to expand and add on more radios uh, and more communication as the, the office grows. Um, we've introduced jail core. It's a handheld device that cuts liability issues with our jailers making their rounds uh, and not being tardy at checking cell blocks, checking on inmates. Uh, this really holds them accountable for what they're, what they're doing within the jail. And it also saves us a lot of money with regards to paper logs. This is all uh, cloud-based. What a cloud is, I have no idea. They tell me it's up there in the cloud, I, I believe what they're telling me. So anyhow, uh, we've also uh, refurbished the command post. Uh, it needed a little TLC. We did that, we got it up and running. Uh, the first time we took it out uh, for a uh, call that came out was the train derailment that just happened not long ago. It gave us the opportunity to set up a command center. It also allowed uh, the, the train company and the cleanup crew to have a location that everyone could meet and strategize. Drones was another issue that I wanted to address. I wanted to make sure that the officers in the city and the parish had drone accessibility. The drones were very important in analyzing aerial view of the train derailment before we deployed people for a cleanup effort. So uh, we we utilized the drones on a uh, on a needed basis with regards to lost children, search and rescue, uh, you name it. We pursue the people. We can have flares that operate off the drones. Your sheriff's office has made seventy thousand calls since twenty twenty. You know, 70,000 calls were, uh, they range from barking chickens. We have those calls. It makes you wonder what these people kind of smoke out there. But there's some barking chickens to uh, alarms, people pulling on car doors in the middle of the night, trying to steal guns, your belongings, all the way up to homicides. And the reason why I'm getting into this is to let you know what kind of professional officers you have working here in Iberia Parish. Your patrol officers responded to 13 homicides that we had out in the parish. Those 13 homicides were uh, one in 2020, one in 2021, three in 2022, and in 2023 we had uh, eight. So that's a total of 13. Out of the 13, 12 were cleared by arrest. And what happens is your patrol officers respond to the scene, they take control of the scene, they make the scene safe. Our detective division comes out, they process the evidence, photograph, submit, uh, write up the report, do interviews, make the arrest. That, that all has to be done by some professionals because if you leave something out, the district attorney doesn't have what he needs to prosecute and get a, a firm conviction on someone. So we have a good outstanding record. So I had the opportunity to serve under Governor Jeff Landry to select the next colonel for Louisiana State Police. I had an inside view as to where they're heading as their organization is going to be beefed up with manpower because they're shorthanded. The view I see is the reason why I'm here. Since 2020, I've lost 20 employees. The 20 employees that I've lost can range from uh, corrections officers, patrol officers, detectives, a couple in the civil department, uh, in, uh, in the 
uh, search and rescue area, we kind of shorthanded a couple of people, had to move some people around. But we had 20. Each one of those 20 people I personally interviewed, they were leaving for higher pay in the public se- in the private sector and to other law enforcement agencies. So I did a study. Louisiana State Police is at $54,000 start pay. I'm going to go with start pay. The St. Martin Sheriff's Office is at 46000 start pay. And I rounded these numbers off for you so we can kind of all keep up and understand. 45000 for Lafayette Sheriff's Office. 40000 42000 for Vermillion Sheriff's Office. 40000 for Broussard and Youngsville, which is right down the road. However, last week I found out from the chief in Broussard they're going to up their salary by 5000 so they're up to 45000 I'm embarrassed to tell you the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Department is at $34,935,000. we are losing our people, our, our well-trained officers to other agencies because of pay. So I am asking for a quarter cent dedicated sales tax for our salaries and benefits. Now, to, to hire these people, I have to have funds available to do my human resource stuff. We have to do background investigation. That's outside of the salary and benefit. We have to uh, do a uh, drug test. We have to do a background test. Uh, We have to do background investigation on somebody that puts their application with the sheriff's office. We do a thorough job with regards to that individual who's applying. I need to have a group of people in the application pool that want to put or want to come to work at the sheriff's office. When they see the salary that the start pay is, they don't put their application. I'm short in that area and I'm not going to um, lower my standards for becoming a police officer. You have to, you have to meet the standards. The only way I can do uh, getting that pool brought up is to offer a better pay. So the, um, the tax is going to be a perpetual tax, which is not going to come off the books because I believe Iberia Parish is heading in the right direction. I want to keep us moving in the right direction. It's, it's imperative that we don't change course. I, uh, I know that our officers do a danger, dangerous job. We all know it's hard to get police officers into this field, but they're not going to come at that salary, I can promise you. We're going to end up losing more people because I know the the sale the the, um, the salary is going to go up. I would imagine they're going to probably tweak some salaries over in Vermillion. There's a new sheriff there, so uh, state police are going to hire on those people. And those if those vacancies come available at another agency, I'm going to lose people to to them as well, as well as maybe state police. So I know Iberia is not keen. On, on taxes, I understand that. Supporting the tax will do something, I think, my personal opinion is businesses are gonna wanna come to Iberia, in Iberia, because they see that the public is behind their law enforcement personnel. They're behind them. It sends a message to the criminal element that hey, the people in Iberia, they like the police. We might, we might think before we do anything. And it sends a message to the deputies and the men and women of the sheriff's office that you'll care about them and that they will be grateful for this pay increase that I can give them. Not supporting the tax. It's going to send a message to businesses again. Hey, that, that parish doesn't care about their law enforcement. I don't think we want to set up business there. The criminal element's going to be hey, the public's not behind law enforcement. I think we can do what we want. I don't particularly care for that. And it sends a message to the men and women of the sheriff's office. The people don't care, don't care about us. We need to go make our money somewhere else. And I'm afraid we can have some people that leave the office behind that and we'll be extremely shorthanded. So I'm asking for the support. If you can find it in your hearts to help these men and women out who put their Life on the line, they put a badge on every day, they can get shot at at any minute, they handle 
drug fentanyl issues. They could die from that. It's a dangerous world we live in. And I know we don't want to be short in, uh, in manpower with regards to law enforcement altogether in the city as well as out in the parish. The wolf is going to be at the back door soon because I'm telling you, the border is open. We don't know who's coming in. And that fentanyl drug is, is starting to pop up its head over here in Iberia Parish. And I, I, I really want to handle this issue. If you go back in the paper and look how many arrests we've made with regards to drugs and guns, it's still on the street. We're still making effective arrests. So if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer a question. Questions, comments? Well, I mean... Yes, sir. Just... I know we have a police department, a city police department. Man, what, how much does our city police, what's the annual starting salary? 41874 41000 I knew that would come up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a no, fair question. I, mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I looked today. I had 315 yeah, I didn't so, mention yeah. the, the PD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a fair question. Uh, yes, sir. I know, I know all over the, so what is our sales tax? Uh, Rick and Dan, I know y'all know y'all keep up with sales taxes and millages. I've been watching y'all for years. What is what is, where we at on sales tax and in the parish again? I don't know off the top of my head. Right now we pay um, nine, and nine and a quarter, three quarter, three quarters. nine and three quarters. So it'd yeah. be ten. That one would bring us ten to and ten? a quarter in the city. Huh? Yeah. yeah, ten yeah. and a quarter in the city. That's before any taxes are paid. That's right. That's right. And, and traditionally, we, to, to clear one thing up, we don't get the ten and a quarter. No, I know, I know that. That. if you remember, some people think we get all yeah, the money. the state well, takes their cut by the time school it board, whittles down the school know. board. You know, all of that comes out of that. You, and right. traditionally, in the city. Our sales taxes are high, our millages are low. Right. Every government's different. Every government structures themselves a little differently or just ends up over time and over growth of things changing. But the way we've been set up is, and it's been that way for a long time, that our sales taxes are high, our millages are lower. And now when you compare us to Youngsville, Broussard, right. and other communities, their taxes and millages combined are higher than us. Correct. It is more expensive to live there. But they have a different tax base and they have a different median income. So it's a kind of a different world. Anyway. And if we can explain one thing uh, about taxes is that a millage is a property tax. Correct. Only people that own property pays that tax. Mm -hmm. A sales tax, everyone pays Everybody for. Pays so that's the difference of the two taxes. Right. Yeah. Every, yeah. Every, every, every. So, so if I might interject, look, I go to the grocery store. You walk out with three bags of groceries. It's $100. Mm -hmm. I'm asking for a quarter of that $100 bill for the men and women of the sheriff's office. Now, I'll go, <laughs> I'm going to pay the tax if I purchase something. When you all go, you pay. When the deputy who receives the benefit from the tax, mm -hmm. when he goes, he pays. When people come to visit our safer community, mm -hmm. they're going to pay. When the bad guy's slinging dope out on the street, goes to the grocery store and buys stuff, he got to eat too. He pays. So we all pay. Well, else? you answered some of my questions okay. about the, okay. the, 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 uh, the tax base in um, Youngsville and Bruce. They're able to pay because they pay our tax, sales tax. Uh, look, I'm not going to get up here and bash a, a, something that's going to put better people in position to serve our community. You know, I'm not going to get up here. I believe that school teachers and, and, and law enforcement should be top with doctors and lawyers, in my opinion. Thank you. That, that's how I've, I've always felt, believe it or not, because uh, if you look at society's issues, if you look at it from my standpoint, I believe that because those people ain't getting paid, you know, let, let's just be real. That's why you got crooked cops. That's why you got teachers who don't want to teach no more, because they're not getting paid enough. So... I'm not going to sit up here and try to bash somebody for feeding their family and competing with the neighboring cities, you, you, you know what I'm saying? So my question was basically what the salary was for our police department and versus uh, the sheriff department. Because I know, I know the, the, the sheriff department, they don't really patrol the city, though, right? Well, there's a lot of things your sheriffs provide for the city. Okay. Okay, I can give you some examples. Give me some examples. 
Schultz. The other night we had a crime scene that was a fairly large crime scene for the city police department. We got called in to help them with that crime scene. We provided the auto perimeter area and we also handled calls for the city while they took care of that, that incident. We all OPCs, orders of protective custody, whether it's in the city or out in the parish, the city don't handle that. The sheriff's office handles it. And that's mental, temporary mental, restraining mental orders. Right. I'm sorry. Mental ill, when you say OPC yes. and CPS. Yes. I have a little brother that's mentally ill. That's all. Your know. sheriff's office handles that, mm -hmm. not the city. Uh, temporary restraining orders, same thing. We handle that. Uh, we have a working agreement with the city police department. And, and I, let me just tell you, the men and women of the city police department do an outstanding job. My hat's off to them. They, they're fighting the same issue. Uh, they do a great job. When we don't mind helping them whenever they need help, and a lot of times when we're short, we call upon them, they help us out. We help each other out. We all wear that badge. Uh, we, uh, we provide some other services for the city. Um, the, the, like I said, the OPCs and the temporary restraining orders, we do that. I think there's, a, there's an issue here that a lot of people don't realize what we do. Let's say the city police department makes a felony arrest inside the city. They got to house that person. They house them at the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Jail. I got to provide four deputies round the clock care and watch and maintain security of that, that inmate that the city arrested. When that person goes to the courthouse to answer for his crime, it's your sheriff's office that transport that deputy to the courthouse here. And it's a sheriff's deputy that maintains security within the courthouse for that, that individual that was arrested for the city. When that person gets convicted and gets transferred to Angola, it's your sheriff's office that transports, not the city. But we don't mind doing that. We, are, we, don't, we, we do our part for the city. There's a lot of stuff that we do that, go, that goes unnoticed. And if something happens in front of my deputies in town and they're transversing through town, which they always do, they're going to stop and address the issue. I can promise you. It won't go overlooked. Yeah, well, I know it's coming up April 27th, so I just want to ask some questions that, because people watch this and it's coming fast. And uh, just, I want to ask some questions to educate the public. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to run around, like I said, uh, trying to knock or bash anything that's going to help people get employed and compensate for the work that they do to keep our parish safe. I'm not going to get up here and do that. Uh, you know, I'm definitely not going to do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I appreciate what you've done. You have changed the image at Iberia Parish Sheriff Department. Uh, I am coming back there to see that place. Not Broken Arrow, not the one on Broken Arrow. <laughs> the one on, you know. Well, we're going to make sure that you don't go to Broken Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to make you sure can, you can come. Arrow. You can yeah, come past my and visit and take a look. I will. We talked about that. I will. Th thank you. Thank okay. you. No, thank you. Uh, Anybody else? Yeah, we had a few. Uh, so, April 10th. So, so Tommy, uh, I admire, you know, it takes, a, it takes a special person to stand up here and try to fight for his people and, and try to get additional funding when you know you're up in, in an uphill battle. And, and I think you're doing a great job because, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when you, when you put your hand on your Bible as elected official, you swear to protect your citizens. And part of it is to do what's right to fund the police department to protect your constituents. And you can't do it without funding and you can't do it without the tools necessary. And everybody that has their own business knows what inflation is doing right now. Costs are going up. Everything's rising. Everything's rising. Now, you know, one thing that we, we really don't remember is that crime has no lines. It doesn't know where the city and parish boundaries are. It has no lines. So one hand washes the other. Both entities have to work together to provide safe environments for our city and parish. And I just think it, it's an investment in our parish, a small investment in our parish. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support it because I feel our, our sheriff department needs it. And, uh, and it's going to go a long way in protecting our businesses as well. I need protection in the parish. I have multi-million dollars worth of equipment, two businesses in the parish. I need protection. So I'm invested in my protection as well. Thank you very much. Councilman Z. Johnson Reed, and then I saw you. I'll get you next. Um, so I've been to the facility, and it is really nice. Thanks. You guys did a great job with that. Um, so this is also for you, Mayor. So our police officers also get a state supplement, correct? Yes. So does the, the sheriff mm -hmm. department get that same state supplement? We get the state supplement as well. Everybody, yes. every, every all law enforcement. Okay. We, so we did this salary check without the state supplemental pay? Right, and ours is for too. everyone. Yeah, and ours all is all agencies. So. 
So it's actually a little higher than 31 because they get the state supplement. That's correct, but it's also hard for those other agencies because I left that off of the quotes I gave you. Okay. That's what it's actually costing us. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, I mean, we're clear about that there is an added state supplement to the salary, so it's not 31. It's, I don't know, I think I was like 6,400, I think. I can't remember, but you know, year, just to yeah. be clear, I think it's 6,400. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's about the same for everybody. Okay. All right. Not, not to cross talk. It's 31 or 34? You said 34 annually? For my office, that's yeah. 34, 9, 35. Okay, 000. sorry, I said 31. You're right, 34 plus the, the state supplement. Okay. That's it. Councilman Russo, do you have your hand up? I judge, I judge uh, the departments, all departments, by the news. We've had a lot of years of bad news. Coming out of a few departments we have. You have straightened yours out, Mr. Sheriff. Thank we you. thank you, sir, and I see it on the news every day. You watch other departments in Opelousas and other towns. They're having troubles, a lot more than we have. So we want to thank you, sir. Well, it's it's the men and women of the sheriff's office that do that job. You know they do the job, and I think uh, they're well-deserving of this uh, pay increase that you're asking for. Thank and, you very uh, much. We want to thank you, sir. For keeping us out the news. Thank you. <laughs> Try to stay out the news as much as I can. <laughs> Councilman Dahl. <laughs> you know, we're lucky in New Iberia. We have a police department in a parish in a city that works together. We have a council in a parish in a city that works together. We have a fire department. Every service we have, they work together. Mm -hmm. Some areas are not that way. But, you know, I, um, I could never be a police officer. I got more alarms around my house than cameras. If a cat comes by, I'm, I'll make your wife get up to go see what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I can tell you, I think this, this part of sense is not even close, but it's a start. And you know what else I feel for is the family and the wives of these police officers when they leave. It's just you never know. You know, and you, you can see down the news, and not saying in New Iberia, but anywhere, as someone's going to see about it, just a, an argument at someone's house, and the policeman gets shot. You know, it's just sad to say we're in that element now. But um, I applaud your effort because no one wants to pay more. But if we can get better people or more people to, to send a signal to the public, it's like, hey, we're not going to mess with letting y'all come in our city or our parish, and we can stay strong behind it. I think it's a message, and I think it, um, I applaud your effort, and I applaud your deputies, just like the city. I mean, that's some, they go through a lot to be a police officer. You don't just go and get a badge and go. You have to go through a lot to get to that point. And I, I think they, they earn any penny we can give them extra. I think we should. And, Thank you for doing the job, and thank you for working with the city. Well, well thank you very much. And uh, I want you to know it's protecting your investment because once we train an individual and they stay here and they got these years of experience, if they choose to go work somewhere else, I can't hardly replace all those years of experience. That's something that's not taught in an academy class. You've got to have worked on the road and handled many, many calls to have that kind of experience. And we can't afford to lose that experience to another agency because guess who reaps the benefit? They do because they don't have to pay to have the guy trained. All that training was spent by our tax dollar. We want to keep that home. So thank you very much. Any other questions? Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. Have a safe night. All right. Madam Clerk, item 4A. Ordinance number 2024-10, an ordinance levying millages on the 2024 tax roll on property subject to taxation by the city of New Iberia. And we're proposing our tax rates would, re would remain exactly the same. <laughs> so first of all, I need a motion to open our public hearing. Motion. From second. Motion by Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin. Is there anyone from the public to comment on this item? Hearing, seeing none, I need a motion to close. Motion. Second. Councilwoman Dee Johnson-Reed and Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte. Thank you all. Uh, now that's closed, I need to go back and I need a motion on the main motion. So moved. Second. 
Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gosselin and Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte. Is there any discussion on the main motion? Hearing, seeing none, please vote your machines. Thank you very much. 4B. Ordinance number 2024-11, an ordinance authorizing the city of New Iberia, state of Louisiana, to proceed with a not to exceed $16 million financing through the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority and providing for other matters with respect thereto. This is our road money, and uh, we have Jason Akers here, so we'll let him address us before we move to our business. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Very good. Uh, good evening, Jason Akers with Foley Udell. I'll be glad to comment during uh, the public comment and address any questions you have uh, afterwards as you move back into session. Uh, this is, as the mayor said, this is the final approval of the sale of the uh, road bonds, $16 million. These will be paid out of the proceeds of the 6.83 mil tax that was approved by the voters last fall. Uh, that tax will be going into effect. Uh, you just uh, approved it in the, in the millage ordinance, uh, so it will start being collected at the beginning of, of next year. Um, we are, as we discussed previously, doing this a little bit differently than other bond issues because of limitations in state law and the use of the proceeds of that tax and the desire to fund the full amount of that tax into usable bond proceeds going through an intermediary conduit called the LCDA. So this authorizes them to move forward to sell the bonds on your behalf. Uh, they will then receive the bond proceeds and loan them directly to the city. And from that point forward, it operates just like a regular old-fashioned city bond issue. It's just utilizing that additional uh, authorization that LCDA has to enhance the value of the tax uh, as you uh, leverage it through this bond issue. Um, we are uh, moving along. We actually had a really good conversation with S&P this morning. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, the mayor does an excellent job in giving his uh, stump speech for the city, uh, the, the, the passion and, and the, the number of good things that are going on around the city and Iberia Parish in general uh, were very evident as a result of that conversation. Um, we're optimistic to get a good rating out of that. Uh, better rating means a lower interest rate on the bonds, and so we're optimistic that will come to fruition as well. Uh, once we get through uh, this ordinance today, uh, we anticipate getting the rating the beginning of the next week. We'll sell the bonds at the week at the week following that, and then proceeds will be available to you in the latter part of May, and you'll begin continuing the road program at that point. So again, I'll, I'll wait and take any comments following public or any questions from you following uh, the public hearing, if that's okay. Yes, sir. So at this time, I need a motion to open our public hearing. Motion. motion. Councilwoman D. Johnson Reed and Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte. Is there anyone from the public to comment on this item? Hearing, seeing none, I need a motion to close. So moved. Second. We have Proton Ricky Gonsolin and Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte. Thank you. Uh, now we can. Do we have any questions before we adopt it? Do we have any questions or comments? I have some questions. So I guess you guys talked about this when I was. I mean, we can in do the Spain. motion. Yeah, let's do the motion. First. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Motion. Do I have a main motion? Second. All right. Uh, Councilman Marlon Lewis and Councilwoman Deidre Ledbetter. Thank you very much. Now that we have the motion, we'll proceed to discussion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't here. Um, I was doing some other city business, <laughs> and <laughs> um, so I, I see here it says something about um, the uh, rate is not going to exceed seven percent. Are we, are we certain that the money that we're going to collect from the millage is going to cover the payments that we're going to have to make, or is, that, are we going to, is there a chance that it could be a shortfall? There, there's always a chance. Mm -hmm. um, however, the 7% is just a not to exceed amount. Right. We anticipate it coming in much less than that. How um, much? Uh, I Give knew me I a guess. said much less. <laughs> I knew you were going to call me on that. Be on the uh, yeah. So right now, comparable transactions we're seeing in the four to four and a half percent yeah. range. Yeah. So certainly it's higher than in 21. Previous, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, old bonds that were in the two and a half range. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that was a great down. This yes, is not yeah. necessarily. But we're doing a lot better now than we were if we had tried to sell uh, at, you know, tried to sell these bonds in uh, the summer or fall of last year. Okay. Uh, based on what we're seeing from the market, the un what the underwriters are telling us, what the financial advisors that you've retained have, have uh, told us as well, 
it is anticipated that the amount of proceeds that the tax is going to bring in should be right about the debt service. Yes. So there should be a very, it should be closely correlated at this time. And then as your assessed value grows over the years, because these are fixed rate bonds, you will know how much you're paying every single year. And because that assessed value is anticipated to grow, eventually that assessed, that uh, tax proceed uh, each year is going to exceed the amount of the, uh, of the debt service that you'd have to pay. Okay. So this intermediary that we're using this time versus previous time, is there a cost to? There, there is a cost. It, it is, I would say, a, a de minimis cost to okay. go through, uh, to go through the the intermediate, the conduit that we would uh, use, um, and uh, it's a it's a fixed cost as well, one time payment up front at closing. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Yes. So when when are we going to know what the the rate is? You said after. Something I can't remember now. Probably not in time uh, for <laughs> your May first May meeting, um, mm -hmm. but definitely the second. Okay. So, uh, but we will certainly, uh, uh, Mayor and Laney will know the information and and we'll uh, make sure that it gets passed along. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Questions? Comments? No, just just a yes, comment. Sir. But DD, typically, when when we do these bonds, we always have reserve funding in the bond initiative that is in reserve in case we have a small shortfall. Is that correct, Jason? Typically, well, one of the benefits of doing using the conduit is that we don't have to fund a reserve right. through right. this one. Um, and others, we used certainly, to. certainly have. The old right. We don't yeah. have to fund a reserve, which means more spendable proceeds available for right. the city, as opposed to having to put that money aside and and it stays there uh, solely for security for bondholders. So it's right. kind of an inefficient use of funds. You could do a lot more with it, put it in towards road projects. Uh, however. Um, you know, we're going to monitor and we're going to ensure and if we get to a situation where um, it looks like the debt service in any year would exceed the amount of taxes that are anticipated to come in then we'll just have the conversation at that point do we want to lower the borrowing uh, principal amount a little mm -hmm. bit just to keep it affordable that's yep. we have that flexibility at this time okay and we did this because you know it took and thank thank you to our voters it took two tries to get this millage reallocated and the first time the interest rates were so low, we, the bar was high. We were right. talking about a lot more money. So as the year went by and we had to do it again, so Jason and I went back and forth and I was really struggling to, to have the most money we could put into the roads because we all know the need is there. And that's when Jason came up with the concept that we would go through the, what's the name, what's the initials? LCDA. Yeah. We would go through them, and that allowed us to put more money, not in a reserve, but right. more money directly in the street, because our need is so great. No, I, appreciate I, I understand. I just, group yeah, <laughs> I, I understand about the reserve. I knew that part. I just wanted to make sure, since we were doing a different process, that we understood exactly what we were doing, and then how much it's going to cost us, because mm -hmm. the voters need to know that it's their money. Right. It is. Anybody else? Well, seeing nothing else, then uh, I need a motion. 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 Oh, we did a motion. We, we just need to vote. We just need to vote. All right. Sorry. Then if you don't mind, vote your machine. Thank you very much. Jason, thank as you. always, thank you. I'll, I'll be back in a few. Good. I appreciate it. <laughs> a few items. Not yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 4C. Ordinance number 2024-12, an ordinance establishing a procedure for the sale or transfer of ownership of a retired police dog and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in con conflict therewith. I need a motion to open our public hearing. Motion. Motion by Councilman Marlon Lewis and a second by Councilwoman mm -hmm. Dita Johnson-Reed. Anyone from the public to talk about our dog? <laughs> None? I need a motion to close the public so hearing. I'm moved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Mayor Pro Gonsolin and Councilman Marlon Lewis. Is there uh, now I need a main motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Brooke Marcotte and second by Councilwoman Dita Johnson Reed. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, please vote your machines. Thank you very much. 4D. Special Ordinance Number 2023-2024-18, an ordinance amending the budget to facilitate the costs related to change order number three for the fiscal year 2021 LCDBG sewer system improvements project. Remember, this is our $90,000 change order for what couldn't be seen under the road. Okay. So I need a motion to open our public hearing. 
Motion. Councilman Dan Dahl and Councilwoman Dita Johnson Reed. Is there any public comment on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to close. Motion. Mayor Patrick Ricky Gosselin and Councilman Marlon Lewis. Now I need to go to the main motion. Motion. <coughs> motion by Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte and second by Councilwoman Deidre Lebeck. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, please vote your machines. Thank you very much. Now we go to resolutions, 5A. Resolution number 24-37, a resolution accepting the municipal water pollution prevention environmental audit report and setting action to maintain permit requirements. This is a report that Craig puts together if there are any discrepancies or if we have any issues. And it also outlines like our future plans of maintenance to stay out of the pollution business, uh, you know, just to make sure that we uh, keep our system where it needs to be and we don't have any regulatory problems uh, from like sewer losses, those kind of things. And Craig's here if we have any questions. I do. Come up, Craig. All right. Come on up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's fine. Yeah, let's do the motion if you don't mind. Oh, so. Sure. Motion. Uh, can I get a motion? <clears throat> motion. Second. Councilwoman Deidre Ledbetter and Councilwoman Deidre Johnson Reed. Thank you all very much. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, I love reading through these things. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> I love writing them. <laughs> um, so, I was surprised that, I mean, on this one in particular, and I know this is all not when you took over, this is all obviously before. Uh, we missed a few targets. Um, some of the flow, monthly flows were actually over what we normally have. But my question was mostly around, there seemed to be some operator errors that happened where things were, I mean, are we providing enough training for our people? Um, what, what, was, what happened there that caused us to, this to be an that issue? Was, um, so you're looking at the exceeded page five. Yeah. Five. Um, page five, you're correct. Thank so you. actually, yeah, all of these that happened were um, on our DMRs. Every month we, we submit, you know, every, every day during the month we submit uh, our samples are collected and tested. Um, these were the months where they had exceedances for those items listed. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like I said, th this was when Vince was here. And on the DMRs, if you have exceedances that month, you typically write an explanation during the month. And these, to be honest, are just Vince's explanations. Okay. Um, well, they all said op due to operator error, so I'm just. Yeah, I mean, the operators are trained. Um, you know, some people, you can only train so much. And, um, but, you know, they have been educated, you know, after these occurrences on, you know, how to properly do what they didn't do. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's overall, it's, it's getting better. And are the nitrogen le levels back to normal? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Yeah, and just to let y'all know, so the scoring um, for here is kind of opposite of normal scoring. The higher the score, the worse it is. Worse it is, it is right. Um, and looking at, you know, the summary, uh, part three, age of the wastewater treatment facilities is the one that we're, we did the worst in. Mm -hmm. 42.5 out of 50. Right. But we are proposing, you know, to the Headworks upgrade soon, which yep. would put this value at zero next year. Okay. Yeah, because those we in, have those investments that are coming. Remember, right. we're doing the rate study. Mm -hmm. We should. We were supposed to get. I hoped the results today. It got moved to Tuesday. Once okay. we have the results of the rate study, then we can make our decision to accept the five million from the state. We also have the 2.5 million low interest loan. So that 7.5 we'll be investing and that'll get that score down to zero, which is okay. awesome. Excellent. Okay. Let me see. I think that's it. Wait, wait, I ask you to please we vote your machine. Check. <clears throat> oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm double checking to make sure oh, I not a problem. my questions on the pages. So, Mayor. Yes, sir. The plant that we share with the uh, parish Mm -hmm. Cotton Street. Cotton we, Street. We do the uh, report for that. No, so Chandler, yeah. Chandler do, Staples does the uh, right. report for Plant Three. Uh -huh, so but if you look on the last few pages, <clears throat> it has Plant Three and Plant Four on right. both mm -hmm. packets. Yeah. So under Plant Four, the city's plant, the part for 
-hmm. from the parish, the very last page, uh -huh. is work that they're done, they're doing that is affecting, you know, our treatment plan. Yes. Improvements they're sending to us, and vice versa. What's on plan three, the plan four stuff is what we're doing to their basins, basins that contribute to the other plan. Yeah. <clears throat> so in plan four, you say, I mean, the report says something about we have a, um, a manpower shortage. Are we yes, still short? Full, are we fully staffed? No. No. Okay. And in the past, Vince has had um, an I and I, you know, kind of program that they would each year they would look at 20% of each basin and do repairs on I and I. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say he said it. It costs around a million dollars to yes. find the problems, a million to to fix them. Correct. Um, which we didn't have, you know, the funds this year. Okay. Or the manpower, but we are working to, you know, re-implement that. And as of right now, we're kind of focusing on the problem areas throughout the city um, with I and I, and we're trying to address the the bigger issues rather than each individual house until we get a better program set up. Okay. And we have shortages in many of our areas. I mean, I'm not. It's, we're talking about sewer right now, but if you look at Parks Public Works. It has been difficult to fill some of our spots. Okay. Mayor, yes, sir. On the I and I, comparing to where we were when we finally got out of the decree, mm -hmm. are, are we kind of keeping up with it? We are. We can't miss too many years that we don't spend that million dollars. Uh, it's going to have to be uh, re-energized a little, if you will. Um, if we are fortunate to get the ha the ha the five million dollars and we already have the low interest money. Once we spend that 7.5, our head works is reworked. The new sewer plant, which is now 16 years old, is not new anymore. So once we make those big improvements and investments, then I think we're back to where we were before of that million dollars a year um, to keep up. Um, but we're not in a danger zone of slipping back into a consent decree. Yeah. But I can tell you, if we go too many years that we don't continue to make those investments in our aged system, we, we could end up in trouble again. What kind of condition, I, I, I'm not sure how many years it's been when we, we did those liners in some of the older neighborhoods. Oh, those liners work. We just did one on we, Yeah, we just did one. And that still is the process we're yes. using for yes. that? It's probably the best process because it's and all clay pipes. It's still you can't outside companies doing it. We're not doing it, right? Right, we bid it out. <clears throat> we bid it out. Yes. Okay. And still, with all those joints and right. all those ancient clay pipes, yeah. it's still the most effective, effective and efficient way to reline And they these holding pipes. up for Yes, much? yeah, the liners hold up. Yeah. But no, we have been kind of focusing on Tampico, you know, that oh, yeah. area, trying to figure out where the main cause of the problem is, the, the you know, larger I&I &I, uh, areas. And we think we, we might be on the same That's good. Um, one of the residents reached out to me after a hard rain we had, and she was able to flush her toilets. Previously was not able to. Yeah, so something is working. We have been doing some work there, and it is getting better. We just need to know that that rate study comes back so we can <clears throat> grab that $5 million. And then with that and the low interest money, we have a flow reroute and some additional work in your area that's really going to help more than, you know, what we've done. Yeah. Anybody else? Yep. Thank you, Craig. Great. Appreciate it. Vote? Thanks. No. Thank no. Okay, then I'd ask you to please vote your machines. We just keep us flushing, Craig. Keep us flushing. <laughs> keep us flushing. <laughs> Try them. <okay. laughs> That's funny. Bobby. Resolution number 24-38, a resolution authorizing the increase of current payment standards for the City of New Iberia Section 8 program. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman David Broussard and the second by Councilwoman Dita Johnson-Reed. And we have our director, hey. Haley. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You want to tell us about this? So, yes. So, currently, we, ha we are using 100% um, of the fair market rent that HUD sets annually, annually as our payment standard. So, the payment standards are used to calculate our housing assistant payments, and it's what the city is going to pay out to the owner on behalf of the family. Um, currently, the fair market rents for our area decreased. And we're having a hard time approving some housing currently for new participants. So with us increasing it to 110%, we won't have that problem. And in the future, it's going to help us get more landlords to participate in the program. And mm -hmm. these new developments that are coming, like AB Simon and some other new projects that we've heard of, um, I think increasing it's definitely going to help us um, be able to work with those landlords. Questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. So do we know why they, they decrease it with all rents going up around the nation? 
I mean, it doesn't no. make sense. They, um, no, I don't know. I have, I got with my HUD field rep today actually about it. Um, and she was going to look into it for me. They're out of New Orleans. Um, but they had suggested we do this because our uh, fair market rents went down. Do you know what's the percentage it went down? Do you, do you know the percentage? So, no. Um, okay. Well, I know that the studio or the one bedroom last year was at 704. And it dropped to, oh, it just dropped to 690. Um, and we're trying to get the one bedroom payment standard up to 759. Okay. Um, the payment standards include rent and utilities, so it's not just rent there. Okay. Okay. That's just odd that they would reduce it when rents are going up everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just really weird. Well, so that's why we our, need to be proactive and yeah. do this. You know? Right. Our average cost okay. per unit for the city is 500. The you know, parish right. is only 200. And $40 wow. per unit cost, and I think that has to put that plays a part in that. Okay, well, Definitely. they need to bump it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so you know, this well, is going to definitely one encourage of the reason more that program's landmarks. growing. Yeah, yeah, good, good, yes, sir. Does that affect the amount of people who will be able to help out? If it will not, okay, actually, um, we I brought this with me today because I got this notification. We got awarded some additional set aside funds from HUD, two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. That's going to be added to our um, HUD held funds. And I was told by my HUD rep today that you know the rate that we're going, we're spending more during, during the year, and they're sending us more money. So the more people we're putting on, you know, it's it shouldn't affect that. That's excellent. Good. Yeah. Yes, sir. So maybe maybe that answer, but but as you increase the rental rates mm -hmm. on the program, does their participation rate go up? Their cost of participation go up as well? Does it track with it? It could. I mean, our cost right. that we pay to the owner could go up. Right. Right. Okay. It just depends on the family's income. But they only require to pay like thirty percent, mm -hmm. right? They only okay. yeah. They're responsible for thirty percent of their adjusted gross income. Yeah. Right. No matter what the rent is. Mm -hmm. No matter what the rent. Okay. Correct. I thought Correct. I thought maybe that tracked up as the rent got higher. No, mm -hmm. no. You still just pay thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is good because I mean thirty percent is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Questions? Comments? Just keep growing our. Uh, our program. Try. This will help. I know it will. I know it will. And you've been very successful, uh, you know, without this. So you're doing a really good job. Yep. Keep thank it coming. You. I'm Keep it coming. <laughs> you know, I don't like to stand in front of everybody. <laughs> I know. Thank you. You did a good job. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Thank, thank you. you. Anything further? And please vote your machines. Thank you very much. Five C. Resolution number 24-39, a resolution accepting six-month bids for supplies. I need a motion. 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 Councilman David Broussard, Councilman Dita Johnson-Reed. Any discussion on this item? One question, man. Yes, sir. I see they got a price on uh, on the gravel and almost all the materials here. Uh, pickup price and delivery price. Mm-hmm. Do, what we do mostly, do we pick up or, no, or deliver? It depends on the job. When Joe's doing something small and we're going to be waiting a long time or we only need a few yards, then we use our dump trucks. Um, there are times that it's a rolling thing and we are in a rhythm and using a lot of it, then we uh, have it delivered. Do they keep a lot at the yard? Some, but not, not a, a huge amount because, you know, sometimes it sits for a long time. We keep yeah. some, yeah. you know, because emergencies happen right. and there'll be something we've got to backfill. Um, but it's kind of a combination of both, um, and it just depends on the scale of what they're doing. Yeah. And this price is for how long? Six months. Six months. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So what do we do when we don't get a bid from anyone? We start making calls. I mean, because we <laughs> have to have the material. So, right. You know, um, usually. I mean, there was a few of them that, that had no bid. Right. On all three from all three companies. Right. So I was just wondering. Right. No, it happens. And when we need that, then we do a spot check and we price it right there. You okay. Know, as for our requirements, we still shop it, but there are times that occasionally we, we don't we don't get a bid. Sometimes have we to can like go back to our um, supplier. If the quantity is very low, it's all structured on by our procurement processes of what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Under a certain amount, you know, you can spend it. At next level, you have to get three prices. Right. Next level, you have to bid it. So you just look at your chart and know, what, you know, where you are in the procurement chain, you know. 
Okay. Well, you answered my question. I was about to ask, do you have to get three prices? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Then I'd ask you please vote your machines. Thank you very much. 5D. Resolution number 24-40, a resolution accepting the proposal from Bayard Habits and Associates Incorporated for debris monitoring services and authorizing the mayor to execute any and all documentation in connection therewith. This is our contract for hurricane monitoring that we do every year. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman D. Johnson Reed, a second by Councilman Mar Lewis. Any discussion on this item? So that's the them picking up after the storm. Right? Yes, okay. uh, they ought to have it. That's them monitoring the pickup. Okay. In other words, someone else will do the pickup. Uh, we'll bring that in another meeting. But they monitor every load, every quantity. They make sure it meets all the requirements. Oh, we don't get. We could stand a chance of not getting paid back. They have never. I mean, they have done a. They have a very good track record of their monitoring. Okay. They take pictures of streets. There's been times people have accused us that as we were picking up hurricane debris, we damaged the street. They could go back and full, pull the photographs and say, I photographed the street before the trucks got on it. I mean, they are, you hire an engineering firm, they are very thorough. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Been doing it for a while. A long time. For us. Well, for us, yes. Questions, comments? And I'd ask you please vote your machines. Thank you very much. Okay. Bobby. Resolution number 24-41, a resolution authorizing the re redemption of certain maturities of the Outstanding General Obligation Refunding Bonds Series 2013 of the City of New Iberia, State of Louisiana, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Can I get a motion? Motion. Wow. Uh, everybody. Uh, yeah, it was almost unanimous. I'll say uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin and Councilman Marlon Lewis. And we have Jason back. This is to pay off those sewer bonds we promised we'd pay off. This is. Great. And I told you I'd be back. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> I knew you would come. Yeah, uh, absolutely. These are sewer bonds that were um, actually refunded in mm -hmm. 2013. These are, you're able to pay these off now. So it's yes. either wait and pay them off March 1 of next year and let that interest accrue for another uh, another 12, uh, 10 months from now, which is really unnecessary, or you can go ahead and pay them off now. And so the money is available. Our suggestion is to go ahead and pay them off now. It would come out of the sinking fund that was established to collect those payments. Yes. Okay. Questions, comments? This is what we promised the voters that we would do, that we would pay this off and then reallocate it with the roads, and it wouldn't be any more millage. So that's what we're doing. Excellent. So no questions, comments? Please vote your machines. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you. You're dismissed. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go Pels. <laughs> yeah, right. It's good to see when a plan comes together. Yeah. Long time coming. Took a long time. Oh, yeah. if, if. Item 6A. Introduction of Special Ordinance Number 2023-2024-19, an ordinance amending the budget to reflect funds for the K-9 narcotics grant and setting for a public hearing on May 7th, 2024. I need a motion. 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 Motion, Councilman D.D. Johnson-Reed and Councilman Brooke Marcotte. This is a grant. Uh, Jane is working on that grant, and it's a canine grant. Any questions or comments? And that would be to replace the retiring dog. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's the equipment. Equipment? I thought it might have been another dog. I'm sorry. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, it's the guard. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought, but I wasn't positive. Well, I seen the That's retirement, why I just said so equipment. Yeah. 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 I thought I could. Yeah. So what is it? I didn't hear. Night vision goggles. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Not for the dog. For the dog. For the dog. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. And please vote your machines. Appreciate it. <laughs> Seven A. Ordinance number 2024-13, an ordinance authorizing the abandonment of a 10-foot easement located on a parcel of property owned by Barton and Kelly Romero, located on lot 217, Teal Drive, Squirrel, Squirrel Run Subdivision, extension number two, all as reviewed and recommended by the I New Iberia Planning and Zoning Commission. They already own the property, so this is just an easement that we don't need for anything. It's kind of landlocked between other properties. They own four lots, I think. So it's not one that we could ever do anything or ever would need to do anything. Uh, and again, they already own the property, so I didn't want anybody to think that they were, we were giving them property. Anyway. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Uh, Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte and Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin, any discussions or questions? 
say let them do what they want to do on their property. Thanks, man. And I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Carport. Carport, huh? Thank you. Yeah, what you spending? Item eight. Hey. Heavens rang to present monthly budget, budget to actual report for November 1st, 2023 through February 29th, 2024. Good, good, evening, good evening, evening, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get that in there on you. <laughs> That's funny. It up on the screen? No. no. Okay. No, I thought we had in the past. I'm just okay. So we are doing this report from November 1st, 23. I mean November 1st of 22. I apologize. November 1st of 23 through so February 29th. It should have been 2024. We have four months. We should be at 33% of our budget. Budgeted revenue for the general fund was 25.3 million. Actuals is 9.3. We're at 36.6% of our budget. Expenses, 27.9 million. We're at 9.5, putting us at 34.10% of our budget. <clears throat> on the police department, it looks like revenues down and expenses are higher. Sir. Police departments, their revenue is mainly our transfer ends from the other funds. Mm -hmm. The police department does not, um, it's not established to be a cash generator. So I hold off on the revenue to see if um, they're needed for their expenses. So the police. I mean, Expenses are 38. I, was, I mean, normally it's not that high. At 38.56. Uh, the, so the police department is has some. Ma'am? Is it the revenue is lower because you have not transferred the money? Correct. Okay. Correct. And the expenses are a little higher than usual because of the way we budgeted the cameras. Okay. It wasn't split out one twelfth each month. We pretty much paid um, ninety percent of it up already. Okay. Any other questions on the general fund? Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to the nineteen sixty sales tax budget revenue of ten point five million, or three point five million, leaving us at thirty three point sixty two percent of our revenue. Distributions of 15.4, budgeted actuals of 3.7, we're at 24.13%. Pepperplex TIF districts, budgeted revenue 800,000. Budgeted actual was 282, putting us at 35.24% of the budget. Expenses 964. Budgeted actual is two point is two hundred and nineteen thousand, putting us at twenty two point sixty six percent. Policemen and firemen's public safety revenue is four point two million. We're at one point four million, putting us at thirty three point two two percent. Distribution four point two, budgeted actual is one point one million, putting us at twenty point five four. At this point, I'm going to point out, you see how your distributions are lower than budgeted? Mm -hmm. I haven't moved the money yet. Okay. So do you move it at a certain time, like quarterly? How often do you move Minimum it? of a quarterly. I'm trying to do it monthly. Okay. All right. Highway 14 TIF, 355000 budgeted revenue. Actual is 102, putting us at 28.84% of the revenue. <clears throat> distributions, 3,000, we're at 800, 
leaving us at 25.52%. Spanish Trail, TIF, 31,000. Budgeted actual is 9.3,000, leaving us at 29.69%. Distributions, 284. I'm just looking at the screen behind you. <laughs> 284 is the distributions. We're at $77, leaving us at 27.17%. Parks and Recreation Fund budgeted revenue of $2.2 million. We're at 700 63,000, leaving us at 34.95%. Distribution or expenses, 1.9 million. Budgeted actual, 520,000, leaving us at 26.78%. Perplex revenue, 3.8 million. Budgeted actual is 856,000, leaving us at 22.53%. Expenses, $1.7 million, we're at $416,000, leaving us at 24.95%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Public Works, revenue, $3.2 million. Budgeted actual is $1.7, leaving us at 51.7. Distributions or expenses, $3.7 million. Actual is 1.1, leaving us at 28.6%. Garbage fund revenue 4.2 million. We're at 1.4 million, leaving us at 33.76%. Expenses 4.3 million. Budgeted actual is 1.4, leaving us at 32.72%. Section 8 vouchers, revenue of 1.6 million, actual is 638,000, leaving us at 40.4% of our revenue. Distributions or expenses, 1 million, 1.6 million, we're at 615, putting us at 38.91%. Last but not least, wastewater. Revenue of 7.4 million, actual 1.8, leaving us at 24.84% of revenue. Expenses of 5.9, actuals of 1.7, leaving us at 29.17%. Questions, comments? Are we tracking? In good shape. We're tracking so far. We're doing good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Our clerk will be right back. We are heading to discussion items. 9A is a discussion regarding performance of Pelicans waste and debris. Brooke, want to start? Yes, of course. Okay. Good. Good. And, and we have the owner and the representative here, okay. as well as some of the crew. Uh, the people who really supervise the work. So we, we yeah, all, I'm all the gangs McTurn, here. Yeah, I'm Rodney McTurney, CEO, Pelican Ways. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, why don't you introduce you everybody? Know Kashani Lewis. She's the district manager. Uh, Joseph uh, is the uh, supervisor here. Look. And then um, Andre is my VP of operation. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy, you know, we, Tommy on the other side. And, and Tom, yeah, I forgot about Tommy there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I was with Tommy all day yesterday, and I still forgot about it. <laughs> uh, you know, I know we, we come in here for some performance uh, and problems, and uh, I, I know, uh, I don't think last week, but weeks before, we were having some issues and, and things like that. Um, you know, we get to sometimes problems, either we shorthand it, or I think this problem was we had a lot of employees sick throughout the this area or throughout the company. Uh, so we, we try to deal with those things. Prior to that, in December, we had a fuel contamination at our pumps, 
and we had to bring in a bunch of rental trucks. So you may see rental trucks here and there uh, because we've had a lot of shops go. We had more gas than diesel in the, the fuel tanks, and it's not good for diesel engine. So we've been creating that. So uh, again, you know, I know we have our faults and we, we do bumps in the road, but we're here to uh, address those problems. So. Good, good. So okay, I just want to start by asking you, do you realize that you do have a great dream team behind you, right? I do. Like, you have Snook, Kashoni, and Tommy that just, they are amazing. They've actually, in my mind, are the reason I waited so long to bring you here because they're so good. Like, right. anytime I call them, they answer the call, they're there immediately. Snook right. has met me on someone's property before. We had a trash can kicked at us, you know, and he just remained <laughs> professional the whole time. Kashoni will respond to my emails any time of the night. I work night shifts sometimes. So I'm sitting there and I'm getting the complaints and I'm typing them in and she'll respond. And it's shocking, but it's amazing. And then Mr. Tommy, I don't deal with him as often, but any time I need him, he definitely is very responsive too. So right. you, you have the perfect people in place. I don't know if it's just the lack of trucks um, because the yard waste is not getting picked up every week, like as stated in the contract. Um, they're doing everything they can. Anytime we complain about nuisance piles, they go and they pick it up as soon as we complain. Um, but we shouldn't have to complain. They should have all the tools that they need to be great, as great as they are. You know, they want to do it for us and, and have everything run orderly, but they can't because they don't have the trucks available and potentially right. employees in the field as well. Right. I'm not sure if it's both things that are going wrong for them, but um, I just want to praise them, make sure they know they are not the yeah, problem no, look, at I, all. I, I got a great team. I, Absolutely. shoni has been with me for a long time. Andre has been with me. They were all drivers before. So look, we ended up had a chance to steal them from the parish and did a mm -hmm. great job. <laughs> and years ago, you know, it's probably almost uh, eight years ago that I got to got introduced to Tommy and that was a great, good asset to me. I worked very hard. I came from the back of a truck and know where where that's at. And I'm not gonna sit here and everything's always perfect because everything's not always perfect, you know. Since 2020, since COVID, parts are harder to come in, new trucks. You know, we, we got trucks on order that they're taking a year, year and a half to come in because these are special type of trucks. I'd ordered a truck about a year and a half ago. I forgot I even ordered. That's how long it was. And it showed up at my front door, and I said, wow, you know, great. Don't get me wrong, but I need to write you a check now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and they're, they're getting more expensive, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, you know, we, we, we're, we're not perfect, and we fail, and we do those things, but we are trying to get those things being, uh, fixed. And I will address, you know, with, with Shoney and, and, and Joe and see what we can do. I know spring cleaning's coming up. Weather's been nice, been beautiful. People are putting out more trash. So we need to try to get on top of that before the storm season here. So, so what do you think you can do differently to maintain the contract as it was written as far as picking up bulk waste and yard waste every week? Because like, that has not happened for months. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll do everything possible to make sure we have the right amount of trucks. Uh, again, you know, um, we do have spare trucks, and I do got new trucks coming in to replace some of these trucks as they age, and I've got some replacement trucks coming in. You should see that probably in the next six months, you're going to start seeing new trucks roll in. I've had that on order for almost a year now, over a year. So you're going to see those things. Uh, and I will eventually look at buying larger boom trucks than I've had, so to help keep up with those deals, it just takes a little time. I have ordered some boom trucks almost a year ago for my Biloxi contract, 45-yard boom trucks, and I just received three of them today, and they were supposed to be ready for October of last year. So I can do all I can do with who's provided me those things and that's what I'm, I'm doing okay. but uh you know as as a local guy and a local owner is you know I try my best to do whatever and provide you the best service you can and deserve and you pay for so I definitely will get with my team and see what we can do to either ramp up more trucks here to get everything cleaned up and you get back on track okay and as far as regular trash pickup um last several weeks they've been a day behind um I guess lack of trucks again, 
or my my district is Monday and Tuesday, which I think are probably the busiest days for you guys. So even if you have to move them around, I, I don't know, like split up my district into different days, make it spill over, purposely schedule it on maybe Wednesday, somebody, um, because people are now getting irritated that their trash is still at the road the next day and they don't know when they're gonna pick up. And, and that you're correct about that. And we've talked about this. We've talked about this a long time. We try not to make changes. But if you look at your route on the routes here, your biggest days are Monday, and Tuesday, and then all the other routes, especially Thursdays, probably. I think Thursday's your lightest route. So that's one thing that I was getting with Kashoni and Andre and all to relook at mapping that and then get with y'all guys to adjust those routes. We've done that in Terrible and Parish, and I say that because right after Ida, you had a lot of damage on the south side of the parish, or should I say the east side, depending on how you look at the parish, but all the bayous and and you had a lot of population losing there, but you had a lot of gain on the west side of the parish. So if you're looking at 42,000 residents, you're looking at you know 18 trucks running those residents, and you, you, you're averaging about 15,000 on Monday, and then you're averaging 17, but on Wednesdays you only have 10,000. You have to average those out, and that's what we need to do here. Right. I, I think that's our biggest problem. You've seen more growth on one route, or the way the routes were designed at the beginning, what I'm thinking is they might have done another route, you know, went and do some other areas beside these little areas that were they were small or how they transition. So, but that's, you know, again, we, we look into that and, and we'll be getting with y'all guys and, and making those adjustments. Okay. The I have no problem better. with the change if they stick to it. You know? Correct. I mean, that could be beneficial for both of us because at least our people would know. You know, and, a, and that was a, the same thing happened to us. A in, finite in, schedule, and, and mm -hmm. it was happening to us in, in in Terrebonne where it was we couldn't finish because it was just too much. You know, we were picking up twelve hundred homes per truck, and it should be like eight hundred homes yep. or something. My area so. is very densely populated, so yeah. it may very well need to happen. And people, I think, would be okay with the change as long as they know that their trash is going to pick up on this day, and right. they don't have to wonder when's it passing. Right. So I think that's definitely a good option. We'll, we'll definitely get back with you and, and get. I want to make sure we map it right. You know, we use our Sir Speedy. We like to get them to do our maps. I've done it for Point KP. I've done it for all of them. They do a really great job here uh, with maps. I've tried to get it from other places, but I'm going to tell you, they are top notch as far as getting what you would need there. So, I'm not saying that because they're here, because I've been using them. I used to use a lot of other people, and, and every time I've asked them for something, they really get it on time and redistrict those things. So. Okay, I think I'm done. Okay. Yes, sir. I think I'm going around the table. <laughs> I mean, yes, sir. I ain't going to say what y'all thinking. Um, are y'all <laughs> hiring? We're always hiring. Yeah, because I'm getting guys coming to my shop. They're not working. They're asking me, do I know what they're hiring at? I'm hearing about these uh, employment issues or maybe. Is it more employment or more trucks with you guys or both? Well, it, I know it's hard you know, to I'm not going to say it's not a combination. I mean, we just had a lot of people sick over the last few weeks, and then we had this, this fuel contamination that we had to totally drain these fuel. We had to tank up on the road. We had to get rental trucks in. So I'm not going to say that was not part of that, that situation. We've got some trucks that just completely engine shot in it because of the gas, too much gas in it. And, you know, do you spend $100,000 replacing the engine? when you go buy your truck for about 250000 Because of the age, you know, you're looking at three years old, you don't spend a hundred, go buy your new truck. So it's kind of kind of takes you that, but we're in a battle with that right now with the, the company that we're dealing with that, that fuels our deal. Never seen it happen, but it happened. You know, this is the first time in 40 years that it, it happened that I've been dealing. You used to get dirty diesel or something like that, you get clocked filters, but never, never, 40% of it being gas in your diesel. That's, that's, that's too much insane. for a diesel engine. But y'all are hiring, though. We are hiring. All right. um, so for me, and I'd say this when y'all here and when y'all wasn't here, I've been, I feel like we came from gardens, which was a well-oiled machine. They knew every nook and cranny, you know, every highway, byway, back road, side street, dead end with one house. They knew all of that. Right. And I feel like y'all got more growing pains than anything. Grow and grow not just growing, but getting used to New Iberia. The learning curve. Yeah, learning curves, thank you. Because it took me a while to learn all the streets in my district. 
and I'm from here. So I know I've always called y'all. Y'all always came through. Uh, you know, I, I just can't say that I had to have horrible results. And uh, like I said, I called Kashani, I called Joe. You know, I, I called people and they let me know, you know, what's going on. And, and I trust them. And normally after I call them, it's resolved for whatever reason. So the way I look at it, the way I see it, I'm serious. And maybe everybody not see it like that. Y'all new company coming behind a well oil machine. Garden was well oiled, man. Yeah, Garden's I mean, been here for about knew. 20 years or so. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, look, I mean, he was a great <coughs> person and great you know, company to do it. Uh, and most of his employees stayed with him. That's what was good about it. People was dedicated and they stayed on the job. It's a little different now, you know. Uh, everybody's looking for that extra quarter, fifty cents. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we pay pretty well. I mean, okay. our drivers make eighty thousand dollars a year, if not more. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty good money, I think. Now y'all looking for mostly drivers back to employment, mostly drivers or back, the guys back in the, the truck too? Yeah. Okay. Because I was at the shop the other day, and your truck passed, and a guy literally said, "Man, I wanted to be high." So I thought about Kashawn and Joe. I said, "I'm gonna send that." Send them my way out. I yeah. promise you, they'll get a job pretty quick. Okay. All right. So, like I as said, long that's as they don't... pass a drug screen. And... So, I, I don't really have a complaint because I can't complain because I understand business. Yeah. I'm in business. I'm not in y'all business. I know trash is really. And look, I think we still have two or three of, of, of Gordy's employees. That's I don't have a whole lot of. I just kind of understand business, and I see that, you know, you can't pick up with somebody who was great, you know, right? No, left off and do exactly what they want to be. But I think y'all. But I'm saying that because yeah. I know y'all want to get there. Yeah. And we need y'all to. I mean, we need y'all to get there. You know. Yeah. We need y'all to get yeah, there. Yeah. I want to give y'all good service. I want to be here for a long haul. I, you know. Right. I know. So. And I mean, I come. I don't know. Y'all don't know Miss Peggy Jarek. That's my aunt. I come behind her, and she knew how to get stuff done. You know, trash and all. <laughs> Be honest, that's what made her famous. Yeah. Getting trash and all of the things that bother people. Yeah. Yep. She was good, and I follow her lead. She teach, she teach me the game for the lack of choice words. So, <laughs> and it's not a game, but you know, I was hearing the sheriff earlier, and he talked about the unusual calls they get. You know, and I used to say this. I, I wish I'd have started writing a book about the waste industry because. I mean, the unusual calls we get for different types of service that's not even got to do with garbage uh, is, is, you know, so I imagine what the sheriff's office get. So uh, I really understand that. And then I was listening to him in stacks, and it so happened the council lady in Terrible and post every parish of what they pay a tax. And y'all really in that low range compared mm -hmm. to everybody else that we I've are. seen. So, uh and I'm not, you know, I'm like everybody else. I don't want to pay more tax, but <laughs> I want service too. Yeah. So. Yep. But I know garbage is big business, and oh, all yeah. I'm doing is asking y'all to handle y'all business. We'll definitely That's do it. that. Thank you, sir. Come from Bruce Orr. Jamar Cott, I need all those numbers <laughs> you have. I've called all of y'all. Oh. What a number is, I can't get through. I tried all kind of numbers, y'all. All give me numbers, city, the mayor, <laughs> secretary. And, man, I can't get through. And mostly on the weekend, Friday night, three money. weeks in a row, Fridays, <laughs> they call me up. Now, I'm asking that at least they get a call back. I don't care if it's Saturday morning. Yep. Or send a truck. Have a little empty tr the truck that goes on weekends from town to town, wherever you have trouble. And pick up the trouble spots, because that's where you're going to get the most acclaim is right. somebody you skipped, a whole little street you skipped. And I got the call. Well, we'll make sure one of us gets In a nice out. way. So <laughs> I want some phone numbers. Yeah. You know, please, we can okay. get you. <coughs> a human. And give us how we can resolve this problem, because I'm going to get calls all weekend long, because that little garbage can sitting in the front. Right. That they got skipped. Yep. And the garbage cans, you are putting back after they all empty them. We don't want to see them lined up all in the streets. I got some narrow streets, Weeks, Julia, French. We don't want to see them in the street because the cars haven't, don't have enough room right. to pass. Hey, that's so they street. can make a habit of trying to get it even in my neighborhood. 
put it in the grass if they can make a habit. Because uh, y'all good, y'all getting good. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to get, you know, if I get a call, I want a number I can get through. Fix that where we can call no, and no, get mean, a well, human. The, we're here to fix whatever we're we gonna can. We're going to get a human on the phone. We worse than it gotten. And I feel like it's on. getting through, you know? Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. please uh, give me some numbers. I'm Don't writing them down, down right now for you. Oh, I love that, Miss Marcotte. Mm -hmm. right Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right, sure. uh, my turn or you want to talk? My neighborhood, y'all doing good. We got the color sex. Go check them. Get a little pick em up truck that you go ahead of the game. Neighborhoods. Yeah, I know we, we have to. I think you had somebody yeah. sign me. Just uh, go, in, go on them cul de sacs and dead ends. Yeah. We don't have nothing. Don't come down here. You know, and you're trash. Yeah. Garbage can you have to pass every time. Yeah. But uh, that's just ideas we're given. But I need some numbers. Hallelujah. <laughs> they should work, right? They will work, yes. First. Put one, two, three on there, Marlo. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I better get, I better get a human no, on no. the phone. Yeah, I know. You got it, Mr. Bruce, sir? Yeah. Yes, man. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So, look, I, I, I really I understand the, the, the position you guys are in because garbage is not a pretty business, but it's, an, right. it's, a, it's a business that creates a lot of attention, right? Um, I, you know, I've had good success, you know, with my uh, problem areas. And listen, you and me both, I'm in the farming business. You ain't going to do it without having problems. So I know. So And so we just got to work through those problems. And I understand now that you explained to me the situation you occurred, I can fully understand why you're having problems. Right. So, and, you know, I applaud you for trying to address it. But And, and if you up there with the contract saying you're going to address the problems, I believe you. But, you know, and... And, and let and, me say, when, it, when we had this problem, especially in this area with the diesel problem, Andrea and a couple of my other supervisors, because I don't want to take drivers away. Or I could have waited for the company to deliver me some rental trucks, which was North Alabama, you know, almost into Tennessee. It was snowing. It was freezing. They showed up in the snow. That <laughs> the, the, the shop was closed with the rental trucks. They had to call. The Uber driver kicked them out and says, I can't just wait here. So, and they didn't bring them extra clothes. We flew them out there, and they made them drive the trucks back. So I applaud Andrea and the head and the other people that brought it there. But I didn't want to take no drivers from here <laughs> to send them. But for me to get a driver for over there to send them, it would have took three or four days, and I didn't want to try to hold up that process right. of getting trucks on the road. So I did. But and luckily, they're not cheap to run on trucks, you know. Uh, no, that's the only comment I had. But I did, I did yeah, have one question. It. I know, and we all face some labor issues. But ha are we equipped if we have to to go with mechanical arms with the containers we have now? If we have, if you have to choose to do that, are we equipped to do that? Yes, you, you, you're equipped to do that. And and, and I'm gonna tell you this. And so I knew the cans are different. That's what I'm asking. When we bidded this contract, we had some very new trucks that weren't that old. So we kind of went, and it kind of helps out to pick up some of that stuff. But I, I, I want to get some new, I got some new trucks ordered, and to replace some of those rear loaders with mechanical, you know, drivers, that, because that's where my labor problem comes in, sure. is, is the guys on the back. Yep. And I wish that wasn't the case, but that's where most of my problems are is having that. So I, I would like to see two or three of those fully automated trucks. Still having some real loaders here to pick up the trash. Sure. Because you want to get that, the little bitty piles, you want less boom trucks to pick up those small piles. Because it takes time to pick up those little piles, put down your gears and pick them up. So hopefully come September, October, you're going to probably start seeing some of those. And, and I was going to get with the mayor. I'm glad you talked about that because I was going to get to the mayor See if we can add some of those fully automated trucks here. Not all, but that's a good some but I, of them. I, you know, I, I'm not a professional in the business, but I've, I've been in public service in parish government and city government to know that they, they, do, they do have their advantages. And, and I think in what I'm seeing, not only in your business, but in my business, everybody, and with the labor issue that we're fighting, I think that would improve the situation on your part tremendously. When, when I started in the business uh, back in 83, I guess I started, I say, but the garbage industry, kind of looking at that and looking where it's going at. And the reason I see more and more people going to the fully automated system because of the later problems on the back. Mm -hmm. And they're going to the full, you know, you even see the McDonald's and you see the kiosks and you see the, you know, because of those issues. Uh, and I always believed that the manual way to pick up garbage was the best way and it's always been the, uh, you get the job done, you clean up around. If somebody puts a bag out, puts a different type of can out, you can pick that up. 
full automated, it's not like that. Right. You know, it's got to be that certain type of cart. So, but th thanks, thanks for what you guys advantage. do and appreciate yeah. it. And uh, I think the mayor's going to address the other question I have on contacts, but I'll let him talk about that one. Well, the only problem I have in my district pretty much is, you know, the yard debris and trash pickup, not the garbage. Um, most of the time, it's on a Thursday, so it, it come, you, you do come on Thursdays, and, and that part is really good. But just a little bit more on uh, the trash, because sometimes um, it stayed out there a month, uh, grass is all brown underneath, and then I'll call, and you all come. But we shouldn't have to call. No, I agree with you. I mean, we don't. That's not the way the contract is, and that's not the way we should do it. We should do it right away, get that picked up, and address those issues. So, so that's my only uh, complaint. You know, if we can get that taken care of, I think we'd be doing a whole lot. Y'all would be really doing good, I think, in my opinion. Thank you. New technology is coming out in the truck, and I've, I've been doing some demos with some, some tablets and other things that's doing. We've been doing it on the front loader. Where we set these, you put all these addresses in, and it takes the drive, especially on front loaders, it takes all the drive it. Instead of them driving around, it takes them exactly to each address. I'm not saying it will be good on the residential because you got to go down the street and come back up the street and pick it up. But technology has come a long way. Of course, that being technology, you got to have a mechanic that's got to have a computer. If a truck goes down, he's got to regen it with a computer to truck. So. Those are, those are the biggest problem in this type of industry you're facing is the regen systems on those trucks. The stop and go on those trucks. Regens weren't really built for the stop and go. They were built for over the road. And you're just trying to take that same deal and, because you've got to stop. And it takes you about 20 minutes to two hours to regen a truck. Uh, otherwise, they go in derate mode, and it gets on a hook. And it's got to go to the shop. That's it? Yes, ma'am. So um, I haven't had <clears throat> any problems with trash pickup. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you guys do a great job. Sometimes my trash can will sit out there till late, but when I get up in the morning, it's empty. It's, you know, at the curb. I just have to take it to the back. The biggest issue is like with uh, Councilwoman Ledbetter said, it's on the trash pickup. Sometimes they'll miss some of the streets that um, they have to back into because it's a dead-end street. And so then I'll get a lot of complaints. Um, and then a couple of times I've had people call me say that your drivers told them that there is one truck for all of New Iberia. And so that <coughs> freaks them out. And yeah. it's on Facebook, and so they're very upset about that. And why would your city, the city have somebody with just one truck? And I'm like, that's not accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I said there may be a truck down right now, but they have right. more than one truck that's assigned to... Um, New Iberia. Right. So you might want to just educate your people that be careful about what they say to the residents because that leaves you guys look at, you know, in a bad light. And I'm trying to fix it, but right. you know, they believe the driver over me because right. they no, think, oh, I, you just don't I, want to I, deal with it. I, I, you're correct. I mean, yeah. one driver can say something and it's, or somebody can say something and it's a social media. Exactly. It's, it's blasting. So. But I'm like a councilman Lewis. I recognize the fact this is a new contract and they're going to be hiccups. This is our hiccup. We just have to figure out how to work together to try and solve the problem. Right. But I mean, all in all, I think you guys are doing a great job. And, and like everyone else said, your people are very, very responsive. Right. Um, love working with them. Love working with Tommy. You guys have been great. So yep. thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, let's remember that we're just a messenger. I know. I know. <laughs> we might be one person calling, but we're just the messenger. And. Uh, I've been up here now 21 years, and the most calls I ever got was about garbage. And, um, you know, Gordon did have a, a well machine going. Um, I, I operate, I, I represent the north side of the bayou. A lot of these people retired. Everything's by the day, by the time. It's amazing. <laughs> they just sit there. My mom lives on that side, 95, and she looks for the garbage truck or whatever. We have, so I'm going to just say the issues 
that we're receiving, and, and, and with Tom and T, I know you have to take care of it, but we're here to tell you the issues. And because you swear they are stealing their children when something's not happening right <laughs> It's amazing. I moved more garbage cans in the last three months I've been here than I did probably the last 20 years. <laughs> Is that with them picking them up without the machine, and I'm just speaking for right. the people I represent, is that they put a lot of them back in front of the driveway. And so when the elderly people leave to go, they can't get out. And they got to get out their cars. To me, it's not a big deal. It's more exercise than I ever do in my life. But for them to get out and move the garbage can is a big deal. And a lot of them put their garbage can next to the driveway. So if they put it back into the driveway, it, to me, honestly, it, I get a lot of calls on that. Um, and it's not a big deal, but if you don't know the problem, you can't address it. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, look, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus here or whatever. I mean, you have supervisors. They got to follow trucks. They got to spot check. They can't be behind every truck. But if you notice that my philosophy was, and I was been, especially now you got carts. Before they had carts, which is people's regular can. But when we do real orders, we we don't want them to put the carts back where they took them, turn them sideways. And the reason why I say sideways is because. When people put them out, when you're picking up a real load, it's usually the handles to the road, and then you turn them sideways. That way, if you're getting help from metal routes, you know those carts were dumped, and then you see all those carts uniform throughout. You know, we do that in Terra when we do it in other areas. If we're not doing it here, you know, I'll get with Joe and we'll make sure we're doing it here. But put them back. The worst thing is to put them in front of somebody's mailbox and to put them in the driveway, yeah. and they got to get out and it's pouring down rain. And, to move that car, they pissed. Yeah. I'd be pissed too, <laughs> even though I work for a garbage company. Yeah. You saying that, uh, where's there's a time, and, and I would say that, you know, because every driver, you know, you got to constantly preach with them, and I'm not trying to take up for anybody, is they want to change their route. They don't tell nobody, they don't tell their supervisor. But look, if you, and, and I want to use this, I don't want to use street name, but if you start from A, go to Z. If you start from Z, go to A. But don't go from A and then go next week and start from Z because you're confusing the people, the male people, you know. And I'll use an example because they're a good example. You know that if your male came at 9 o'clock in the morning, you expect it to be there at 9 o'clock in the morning. Of course, now I get my mom neighbor's mail now. And yeah. I get everybody else's mail. You get it at 7 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember yeah. male people used to be on time. Mm -hmm. and, but... It, you know, and I'm not trying to discredit ourselves, but I'm just saying that almost every day I got to go deliver two or three of my neighbors' mail that's in my pocket. I'm sure they get my mail too, but, uh, and but you're, you're right about that. And my mother in law was a big, like, yeah. oh, y'all not perfect. They didn't put my can back. So I had to hear it when my mother in law been in this business. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we have some subdivisions in the area I represent, and they're pretty tight on some of their subdivision regulations. But it's like, you know, they'll call me at 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We supposed to pick up trash Monday morning. It's still Monday. You know, <laughs> it's Monday all day. And sometimes they come late at night. I'm, look, it's Monday. We, we did well. But that's how sometimes some people are. And, and so I always throw it out, Monday's still here. So if you don't want to ride to 10 o'clock Monday night, I'm good with it. Because we're still Monday. So okay. it yeah, makes I'm laughing at that because I had a guy, and she can tell you, he calls me where the route begins, one route begins, one route ends. As a matter of fact, his house, where the route ends, one of the other route ends. But if he sees the other truck picking up, he calls me, and it's Tuesday. And, and it got to a point where every Tuesday about 1 o'clock he was calling me. I said, look, when your coverage not picked up on Wednesday, call me. <laughs> yeah, and and something else I'm just gonna tell you because I've been overwhelmed by it is a garbage can. Your garbage is in it, and a garbage can is a can. You look at it, debris is in front of their house, and, and it just they see that every day, and it really gets them. I don't care if it's a pile, or small pile, big pile. Right. I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I, I have a dumpster in my office, and if it's a little pile, I'll go pick it up. It's just not worth me, you know, right. making it happen. But I remember those little piles should be picked up with the real order trucks. Yeah, and gardens, 
you used to have um, a, like a spotter, I think. A little right. truck would go around and see, because one street might not had no debris. The next one might have three. And I don't know if they picked them up, what they did, but they would kind of scope the area out before they picked it up. Uh, but a lot of people in the district I represent is on schedules. <laughs> and if they could cut the grass on a Thursday, they expect the branches that had to be picked up. You know, they, they right. do it upon the schedule of what they have. Right. And it's not a big deal, but to them, it's a big deal. Yeah. And, and I said, look, matter of fact, I said, we're going to talk to them, and I can just tell, you, tell them what the problems we're having. And, 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 and well, I'll have one more, uh, just one more yeah. problem. And I know you're going to address it. People, and I don't know how you keep a track of it, and I think the mayor probably talked to Tommy T about it, is that the recycling on my right. side of Bayou, they recycle. If something happened between me and my wife, it will be because of recycling, <laughs> not because of no other reason. <laughs> um, we somehow, they're watching, and I know some days you have a broken truck, some days they pick up the recycling, and I have pictures of them putting it together with the other trash, and it's becoming an issue, and I think the recycling really came down. I don't think we do a lot of it in New Iberia. I could be wrong. Uh, I know the parish doesn't. It used to be big. I don't know if it's affordable to do it anymore. I don't know what the answer is to it, but that is one of the biggest complaints I'm getting. And I'm just representing my district. I'm not talking for the city. I'm just saying the problems that people are calling me about. And, you know, we can tell you the problem, and that's a big step. That they, we know we have a problem. We could try to address the problem. Right. And, and that's all I think tonight is about. Yeah, no, no. Because let me tell you, I have a business, 53 years, employees. Let me tell you, I understand about it. Yeah. It's tough. Hey, but when you have good employees, I don't care how good they are, they can do so much. Correct. Equipment, same way. I understand all of that. Correct. The end user sometimes does not understand that. Correct. But I think we may, might need to look at that again because I don't know if the money we spend for recycles is worth it that maybe we can put in another part of our garbage. I, I don't know that. And I'm not one to make that decision, but something has to be changed. It, it, to it's make kind of a hard deal, and I'm not going to tell you. Recycle is not getting cheaper. It's actually, you know, the tonnage is $250, and I say tonnage, to send it to a processing fee. You know, I, like I remember in 90 eight when we started uh, oh actually in 88 when we started recycling yeah. for food and other places it was 18 gallon cans you had to separate it oh, yeah. her side now a single stream they got these u unique machines that they have that they spent 10 20 million dollars on this uh place but you it's hard to get rid of it and once they got it stored they store so much and so they charge in the end user for it now where they used to get money off of it. Now you don't do that. It's we used to like out. make money off of it. You used to now, yeah. but you know, I remember as a kid to go pick up a bunch of Coke bottles right. and go make money so I can buy me a candy bar and a drink. Well, that's not like that with plastic. It's just too much plastic. But maybe there. we might have to look at that yeah. because to me, debris is the most complaints I'm getting because it's in front of that house. Then it's in a drainage because it's on the curb, right. and when we get bad weather, it just goes right down. I'm on the cul-de-sac, so I could just see it going down. And um, so I just think that's, debris to me is more important than a garbage can. A garbage can a float, right. you know? But um, I just wanted to give you the few little problems I had because those problems will continue. Right. You know, the mechanical trucks will help, but the debris, you have to use manual labor. Like you right. said, when you do the mechanical trucks, then you're taking away the opportunity of picking up the debris at that same point. Right. Then you got to add more boom trucks or stuff like that. You but, know, so. But you're, you're right. But that's why I'm saying, you know, we run, uh, you know, a recycle truck and four uh, residential truck, you know, for, uh, a, re a recycle truck on recycle week and then the uh, thing. So adding to a uh, side loader. And look, like I said, a, a silo that can pick up about twelve to fifteen hundred homes in, uh, an hour, uh, an hour, where a real loader is only going to pick up about a hundred homes an hour. So that's a huge difference, and that's a lot of speed you can get with that. Believe it or not, that's. And the garbage can goes back to where they put it. And it goes back to where they put it. Yeah, that's that's. Because 
the way these are designed now is, you know, once you pick it up, you press the button, it dumps, and then it just sets it back of where it was picked up at. Yeah. Unless you do like me, first time you learn how to use it after the storm, Daryl got a brand new truck in, and I didn't know, but I, I knew I needed to get on the road to help us pick up after the storm and light us. So I went on drive a truck and knocked a couple of mailboxes down, and <laughs> but I still got the people's garbage picked up. <laughs> so when you have the garbage can and you have the bag of debris next to it, say the leaves, and they pick up the garbage can, that bag should stay there. If they're picking up the garbage can with a fully automated or a real? No, just real like you're doing they now. They should take the bag of leaves yeah. with And it's all going to be put in the same truck? Yes. Okay, with that being said, because I had a few arguments about that, why that bag can't be put in the garbage can? It could be. It just depends on the oh, resident not, not doing Look, the well, cans These are not too yeah. full. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can you say that again? My wife might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they do that and they put it in a truck, it's yes, in the right. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. That's, that was worth the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the door's going to be locked when you get home. Uh, yeah, you ain't got stuff for the night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate what you do. It is hard. And let me tell you, I've been at 21 years, almost 22, and it's always been an issue. I don't care if it's with Republic, with Garden, with whoever. Right. And it's probably always will be an issue. But it is to some people that's, they want their house to be neat, they want it to be clean, and their schedule is a schedule. And I just think we have to throw our concerns out there because that's what we're here to do. No, I agree with you. I mean, yeah. you pay for a service and they want the service. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. I definitely agree with you, and we're going to address that. Thank you. Okay. Well, Thank you. Right. I, I'm going to wrap up. What I have, uh, yeah, sorry, I get a turn. <laughs> What I have is I hear from every council person. They send me the problems. Um, first of all, you got a great staff. Your administrative staff, the people in this room, bust their butt for you and for our citizens and really try to address all the issues. I'm not saying they succeed all the time because of all the factors we've talked about, but you got some great people in this room, and I'm sure you got some great drivers and some great people in your whole company. Right. But I get the list of complaints. My office gets a lot of complaints. The one disconnect we have is all these phone numbers that we've shared. It's really, and in the beginning it did, it's really supposed to go through my office because I'm supposed to track it because I'm supposed to penalize you. Right. And one thing that is broken in our system is, and no offense to anybody, but all the calling of these guys in the room direct, you bypassing me to be able to find them because I don't hear about them all. What I hear about is the ones that are three weeks old and the grass is dead underneath it, the one that's been there for a month, the tires that haven't gotten, because you can pick up five tires per residence, the, the five tires that don't get picked up, the, the stuff that's been there on your street and you tell me about it, it's been there for two months. You know, that's usually when the council really calls me and, and I call Tommy and I try to stay and deal with Tommy and I don't call anybody, and I can, I have their numbers. I, they, I get an email or a text that shows me where they are and, you know, we miss this or we'll, we got 10% left tomorrow because they didn't finish the route. I keep track of all of that. Right. But I try to deal with Tommy so he knows the issues, he knows what's going on, and I really don't call the, the other staff members direct. And the reason is why is that I think we should all be tracking it. So one of the things we do have to kind of tighten up on is you need to call Amber. I don't care if you call them direct if you're getting results. But some kind of way you need to send that in because there will come a time, I am like most of the council members had said, really all of us, you're, you have some growing pains. I see you're trying to address the issues. You're here tonight. So we haven't fined you. Right. But it's a long contract, okay? Right. Right. And, and, and too much more of this than they're going to quit calling you people and they're only going to call the city and the fines are coming. Right. And I really didn't want to do that to you because I see you trying and I see the growing pains and I, and I hear the, you know, the problems you've had. And, you know, we have staff issues here at the city. You know, I have staff issues at my construction company. I mean, you know, we all fight that. So between that and the equipment breakdowns, I totally understand. But we as a council and, you know, are going to have to tighten up and start documenting all the calls. Right. On the flip side, I call your people. I call through Tommy and I watch him contact, you know, the rest of your staff. And you do deal with the issues. There hasn't been almost anything 
that I called and said, man, we got to get some relief. You know, councilperson, whoever is just getting a lot of heat. We got to get that right. picked up. Right. It gets picked up. And, and for that, I applaud you. The debris is the worst thing, and it is where we have issues and, you know, pictures that people send me two weeks in a row, three weeks in a row. Hey, it didn't get picked up. I didn't say it was a great big pile. I didn't say sometimes it's not in a weird location, that it's a house that I had to go ride three times before I could find it. Uh, and I've lived here my whole life. So sometimes it's the oddball piece or it's not directly put. Uh, you know, there's been times that it's not put right where it should be or for some reason it got put across the street on an empty lot. And one of the biggest things that we're constantly having to communicate is that your contract is by household, it's not by lot. Right. And so when things get put, I don't really want it in front of my house because I have a party next week and it gets put across the street and then I find about it, about it three weeks later, it really wasn't put in the right place. Um, right. You know, it needs to be in front I, of the house. And, and look, I'm not saying that it may not be legit. We, yeah. we may still own that pile. Right. But <laughs> sometimes it's questioned. Uh, and you're right, there's, you know, sometimes people put it on their tree and you can't get that boom, or you'll break their tree and then they want you to pay for their broken branch or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, but those things should be reported and should be notified to the yes. city why we didn't do those things, and it should be documented. So there's no excuse that if we didn't pick it up, they should have a documentation why we didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. I've seen where people put trash on top of a water meter and we pull the whole water meter out. Or gas meter. We've done that. Thank God we didn't explode, but yeah. we've done it many of times. No, so like I said, I, um, yeah. we all see the issues. We all work as a team. We do very well together. Um, you know, we just got to keep working toward, you know, perfecting what you do. Um, I do think that some side loaders would greatly help because then you'd have a combination of labor, boots on the ground, and equipment. And I do think, I do love the idea because, you know, every one of these complaints, from they put the can in my driveway, they miss my spot, they, you know, whatever. You know, we all hear all of those. So I am hopeful that the reason I wanted y'all to come tonight and the reason we had a discussion, Brooke put it on the agenda, it was, it was long overdue. But I, I think that you can't fix the problems if you don't know about the problems. Right. Um, but your people do, and, and they work really hard, you know, and I think you get them the assets they need, you definitely have the right team. So with the assets that they need, I think we can clear a lot of this up. Yeah, uh, you, I appreciate you coming. And I was looking at that over the last, uh, I'll say, three, four months ago because of I called to see about real orders. And I said, you know what? Most of these places that we're picking up used to be silos. We got the right cans. Let's try, instead mm -hmm. of let's re start replacing them somewhat with them siloers. Yeah. And it would be more efficient. So, I mean, you wouldn't believe how, when, when we have a siloer down in, in Point Capee and we have to run a real order, how much slower it is. And we much late on the route than yeah. it is. So when you look at, and I'm just saying that when you're looking at them having four siloers and you have four railroaders, it's going to take you more time to pick it up. But you're picking up trash too along the way. I'm not gotcha. saying that you're not, gotcha. but uh, I, I think that's the way to go, and that's the way I, we want to go with yeah. this. And I, and I do like the idea of reworking your routes, and I yeah. think that as long as you can stay consistent, breaking some of those routes up that to those lighter days, I think our citizens will appreciate that. And once they realize and get, there'll be a little bit of uh, rhythm adjustment for them to get in the right day. And, the, you know, that'll be an issue for a little while. But I think once we, that settles, you know, we, we would be and more efficient. Really, you know, we and don't ever sure. change the cans. Yeah. I don't ever want to have to go through that can thing. Again. <laughs> no, it, that, was <laughs> that was the worst thing. It's not as bad as you think. And, and, and again, we try to keep the same routes because we don't want to confuse people. Mm -hmm. A route, you know, Point P went to once a week. We had to change all these routes, and it really confused, especially doing once a week. Then they decided to go back twice a week, so we had to go back and change all the routes again within three months. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, our last item, 9B, Madam Clerk. A discussion regarding the American Rescue Plan Act project entitled B Business Development Grants. Okay, what we're trying to do, this is the time that our ARPA funds before the end of this year need to be committed. We don't have to spend them till 20, the end of 26, but we need them committed. So a lot of these programs that we all adopted and put together, it's time to start hitting. So this first one is our business development grants. So we have a list of, uh, and it's a discussion tonight, it will come back to vote on. You, you, in your packet, 
So we're just thinking that, you know, these grants are $3,000 a piece. We have a total of $150,000. So we're starting to define and need your input who would be eligible. So disadvantaged businesses, women-owned businesses, you know, we are trying to find businesses that have been in business for a year, all right? We're trying to make it meaningful. We're not asking, we don't want to pay a utility bill. You know, we would like to pay for something. We even have a list of, of what we think would be eligible, you know, from accessibility grants, equipment, marketing, operation strategies, you know, some physical improvements, uh, sustainability upgrades. So we're trying to find areas and then it's going to be a competition in a way. I don't know that we can fund every one, and we are going to have to look at these. You know, in other words, if we get at three thousand dollars a piece, that's you know, uh, um, if we get a hundred of them, you know, we can't do them. Uh, so we can do fifty. So we're going to have to look at the applications and pick the ones that we feel will do the most good to help these small businesses. Because you could have somebody who's working out of their house for the last year. If it's approved, they have to be licensed. They have to have an occupational license. So that's only like if it's a home-based business um, that is approved. If it's not or it's a small commercial business that needs to grow or has some opportunity, well, again, this is what we set this money aside. And I'll be bringing one of these to every meeting. You know, we have the uh, scholarships that we want to give to go to trade school, to send kids who are not going to go to college, who's going to go to, you know, trade school, if you will, or, you know, college. Um, uh, so we're going to bring those. We have uh, the one block at a time that we'll be bringing. So we're going to flesh out the rules for it. So what my hope is over the next three or four months, we bring one of these at a time, and they'll be kind of, you know, you'll be doing your homework on them while we're voting on one. You'll be looking at another. But my goal is over the next three or four months that all of these programs, we have the neighborhood associations that will each be getting uh, $60,000. Uh, and remember, for all of these, the weird part and the work that we have not fleshed out, we have to spend the money. In other words, because of our procurements and because these are federal dollars and by the way that we agreed to take these ARPA funds, we're not writing anybody a check for $3,000. We will have to do 50 little projects, which is going to be nuts. But there's no way to just say, here's your money. I hope you do what you're supposed to do. We have to report on that, so they have to do. And you know, one of the issues is, do we do $53,000, or do we up it a little bit? Because we've been looking at the mechanics of, we want to help as many people as we can, but I don't have a bigger staff. Uh, you know, so that's, don't go for. <laughs> that's one of the things we have to talk about. You know, my initial thing was, yeah, let's help as many people as we, as we can. Now, you know, when I'm thinking about the mechanics of it, you know, we have to do that. We will have to purchase. We will have to do everything because they, they can't. I can't. I can't say in all certainty I gave you $3,000 and you spent it where you're supposed to spend it. I mean, we can't lie on the offer report. And can we get them to turn in receipts? We're going to have to think, and that's kind of why we're doing this. We're going to have to think of a process. But if yeah. I don't want to get in a situation where they turn a receipt and it's something they, can't, they weren't supposed to do. In other words, it has to end at some point. This is a very ambitious program, as all of the ones that are coming are. But we can't put ourselves in a spot where we have to be the police, and I have two assistants and a clerk who does all kind of stuff besides being a clerk. I can't have it where all of a sudden my staff is running around to find $1,500 that somebody didn't spend correctly. And then what do you do? You know, if they're a very small business, you know, what's my recourse? So we are going to have to think about it. But it's all good projects, and it's all stuff that can really help our community. I mean, who doesn't want to see some kids go and learn to be an electrician? Who doesn't want to take half a million dollars and clean up blight in our community? Who doesn't want to take a million dollars and say, we're going to do X amount of houses and, and those renovations that we agreed on that we could do at the very beginning? Same thing with this. Who does not want to help you know, a fledgling business? So this is my first stab at, with a lot of help, thank you, Lanny, that we put this packet together. It's not finished. It's not complete. This is, and this is the first one. So I'm asking you to look at them, and then we'll have you know, other discussions. And then once we have something that we think is fleshed out, I'm going to bring it back for you to vote on it. Because that way, we are all on the same team, and we've all approved, and all had input you know, what we're trying to do. Because it's huge. I mean, it's, we are spending you know, 
probably a million and a half dollars plus that is that's going maybe almost two million that is going back into the community to the people that need it the most and that can do the most good um, so that's kind of my spiel I'll open it up for comments and questions and like I said we're not done with this this is just to kind of introduce it yes sir so um, the criteria is a criteria that um, you're making they have to meet we are making you yes as sir a, we as a, we as a council we, or? we as a council okay. we put this out here as a discussion to say let's start talking about the criteria where i knew i had a problem already that that i don't know how i'm gonna micromanage 50 little projects but yes sir the, the goal is for us to come up with the criteria so so it, it could be for a new business or existing business well we had said that it needs to be an existing business okay. because again if you haven't been in business for a year, you don't have any track right. record. If I just hand you money and say, go, we, we might never see a, a, a result. So we had talked about it, and, and I've been working with some council members kind of discussing these things and bouncing it off. We think it needs to be a business that's been in business for a year. So it's more about enhancing your business to grow your business, not to operate your business. Correct, correct. Right. I don't want to pay somebody's utility bill. Like that's not the insurance you know. Or What's that? Not like insurance. It's right. Mostly we, to enhance that business with maybe a sign or, yeah. or advertisement. It, or, or sign, that advertisement, nature. marketing, uh, you know. Uh, programs. Programs, yeah, just stuff that, that would enhance their business. So what we're looking for training. is people training. We're looking for people who are succeeding at their business, but it's very small. It's very, you know, they've already... <laughs> fought the battle uphill because, you know, they're, they're a small business or a disadvantaged business, uh, you know, uh, I want to help them. And, I, and we changed the rules to make it all over town so that we could help, you know, whoever fits the bill. Um, they're going to have to prove they fit the bill as well, you know. Uh, we're not looking if you are a uh, – this is to start those fledgling and those struggling businesses that are making it but, you know, need some help. I'm not looking to, you know, give $3,000 or whatever number we come up to to a Fortune 500 company. That's not what we're trying to do. But you, you, you're talking about rebating them the money after they spend it and prove that the money is spent well or give it to them and hope they spend it right. We're not doing either, sir. It okay. would be we, we would end up, that's why we might have to up the rate a little bit. We would end up spending the money. So I don't know that I can handle fifty trans fifty three thousand dollar transactions. It, yeah, the, the, that might be too much. You yeah. might have to change that. I think I think first thing Lane and I talked about it today in length, and we were like, yeah, five thousand for thirty. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Because I only have you so want to make it work. You want to yeah. make it. Yeah, and also you can't buy much for three thousand no. dollars. Yeah, and, and you can't have fifty different kinds of projects. It'll drive you crazy. Right. Well, that's you know, what I mean, we I have think, determined. Yeah, I think the categories have to be simplified. Because there's a lot of, you know, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labor's a few, right? I mean, yeah. you've yeah. got a lot of need out there. We do. You know, it's not like you lack need, but. Yeah. Like I said, but, these were just examples. I do think yeah. we're going to whittle this down. But if, if all options are on the table, people are going to go nuts. Yes. Absolutely nuts. And Agreed. And, of course, you gotta, and you got to make the rules before the game starts. That's, that's what we're doing. You know, and I have to have the money committed by the end of the year of who's doing it, but I have till the end of the year. But we have about five of these projects to, to flesh out. Um, so I started with a complicated one. Mm -hmm. It's a good problem. Yeah, it is a good problem. And, and, and the need is there, and it's going to be something good to do. I mean, we're gonna, when we get through this year of all this hard work, by 26 when we finish this, we're going to have really done some things that I haven't seen government do. So yes, you have decided to kind of go away from maybe having them attend some classes or some seminars and qualify for it at the end? It, it, yeah, I, I don't know if that's going to, I think we're going to run out of time. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not, I didn't really decide yes or no, but I do think, you know, mm -hmm. we're just starting to realize the mountain we're trying to climb. Okay. And so um, what, what, and I know Laney probably is more familiar with this, but Laney, so what is the, the rule for opera? How much documentation would we need? You have to basically have like a legally binding something that says we're going to spend the money on this. And then proof you did it. Right. And that's why, for just like with the neighborhood associations, we decided they'll pick a project, we'll do the project, and, and pay for it. But that way we know, because it's, it's a binding thing. And when you break it down to smaller and smaller increments, even at $5,000, and you're helping somebody who really needs the help, 
you're going to crush them if they don't succeed and, and, and you go lean on them and say, you didn't spend it the right way, I need it back. No. That I, would be a disaster. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you could do is make each person come in with a bid, like a, you know, the proposal. proposal. They want oh, to they do are going to have to do some work. Bid, and then you write the check to the company mm -hmm. that they selected. And that way, you know yes, it's that's, paid for. That's kind yeah. of what we're thinking. Yeah. And you got that proposal. But they need to do the legwork. In other words, if they're, nothing's, everything's free, but nothing's free. In other words, if we're going to mm -hmm. do that, yeah. uh, they, they need to do the business plan and come up with exactly what you're saying. Yeah. All of the steps to procure it are they're not going to get it. Right. Right, man. Yes, sir. So, I, you know, just listening to the comments, I think, I think this council will come up with some good ideas and good thoughts. Oh, but, yeah. but my, you, you, may, you said, you know, we're going to give this money to struggling businesses. I, I don't want to lose sight of the businesses that are successful. Because I think I don't want to penalize the business that are successful. I just really meant they struggled to right. get there. No, no, no. Well, you're right. They yeah. can't be, so, I'm going to go bankrupt after no, I spend exactly. $5,000. No. <laughs> but I want to make sure that, that, that businesses that are small business that are successful still have the opportunity to apply for whatever number we come up with. Because they have worked hard and put mm -hmm. the sweat and tears into what they want to achieve their goal. Sure. And it's not just disadvantages or struggling businesses. I think the city has a, a wealth of both of those kind of businesses. So we need to keep that door open. For sure. Right. But I think but it I is think disadvantages. Have, bit. Yeah. It is yeah. disadvantage. It is. I think That's the law the states says you got to use it on disadvantage. All right, it doesn't say it in here. We'll find out. So offer, I, I thought the offer funds were for disadvantaged, marginalized communities. There is a whole section on it, and when we did vote on the ARPA package, we did put that it would be right. disadvantaged businesses. Right. Yes. We didn't define what is disadvantaged. disadvantaged what it was, right. and we actually broadened the scope a little bit, because originally we had it that we were doing it at West End, you know, the yeah, way we, we worded it. Yeah, we couldn't do it, yeah, because it was West End, yeah. the neighborhood. Right, and right. That's and then not... we made it citywide. Yeah. So we exactly. will, we have the opportunity to define, you know, how far we want to go. Because a disadvantaged business could just be a woman-owned business. Could be, it could be a business that doesn't get employees, too. It could be a, we, we got to set those rules, but I'm saying if we, right. we right. set that scope too tight, you know, no, we're going to... No, I don't think we, I, I think we're going to make it broad enough so yeah. that we can capture as many people as yeah. possible. Yeah, and That's it needs to be a citywide yeah. program. Yeah. I think we're yeah. going to have too many, and, and some people are not going to get it, but right. that's, right. you know, that's part of it. I mean, that's, we're just going to mm -hmm. make our selections. So we, we definitely need to, as we, we kind of go through this and we make, you know, put set up all these different categories of what kind of businesses, we do need to come up with what that standard is. Like, you need to come up with a simple business plan and, uh, you know, what you're going to use the money for, an, an explanation of what you would use the money for. Right. I do think we um, need to narrow so that it down. It's standard, so everybody gives us the same thing, so it's easier mm -hmm. for us to, to make grade. a decision. Yes. Right, based on that. Yeah. Do you have some more? Yes, yeah, I just want who ultimately is, are you going to bring these requests in front of the council publicly, or are you going to make the decision, how, what you determine, how you determine who wins the grant or not? If you ask me... I'm asking, I don't know. It would be like Shark Tank. I would bring, they would come, I've always said yep. that, they would come here and we would decide. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate if you ask me. I'm I mean, fine with it. If there's it had be, to be a special meeting. Yeah, if there's going to be transparency. that. If there's yeah. going to be transparency, yeah. Yeah. we I, are I spending it money, while it's that. money we got from ARPA, but we are spending dollars mm -hmm. and giving, awarding people. Uh, if you ask me, it's all, everything we do is public. So I think they, that, you know, that's the way we I would do. handle it. You do realize that, and I like the idea, and I think that that should be part of the, part of what we do. But you're gonna, some people are going to say, "I'm not going to do that." You know, well, I'm not going yeah. in front of the council. I'm not oh, going no, to. And, and, and if that's the well. case, then they disqualify. They disqualify. Yeah. No, I think if know, that's what y'all would like, that this council would like to do. We're going to have a short list that you go through step one and two, and if you don't meet that, you don't just don't go any further. Yeah, right. In yeah. other words, we are going to set the on all time. of these things. Yeah. We're going to set the parameters on all of them. You look at one block at a time that's going to do the houses. You need to own the house. We're, we're not doing landlord's houses, okay? You know, Maybe boom. If you don't amount. own it, well, then no offense, you, you, you can't get there. Right. Uh, you know, with, with this one, it's going to be a requirement if that's what we choose. You've been in business for a year. And whatever other requirements we put in place. If you're not willing to do the lag work or you're not willing to come publicly and say, you know, whatever that dollar if it increases to five thousand, mm -hmm. I need the five thousand. I want the five thousand dollars for X, Y, Z. If you're not willing to do it, mm -hmm. then that's our program, you know. Yeah. But to me, the more transparency we have, the better, because there's always going to be somebody who's not going to make the cut. 
I, I'm not being ugly, but there's always going to be something that, you know, someone's going to be disgruntled, then the only thing you can do when you have a program is do it as, transparency, as, as transparent as you can and say, you know, th this is the decision we made. So are, are you finished? I'm finished. Yes, sir. And, Mayor, we, this could be a, a, a meeting that it doesn't have to be on TV. Right. It's right. just to be a meeting yeah. and it ha that we can see and, huh? and have our input. But yeah. And we don't even have to do it here. It doesn't it mean the whole the city's got to know what's going on. Right. right. I mean, if you're going to make it, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. kind of a competition in a way. Right. And if you're going to make it, yeah. I I'm not trying to belittle anybody or do anything that's disrespectful. But at the same time, we we working. We can have some fun. We're giving out $150,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my way of looking at it is you do it at the slime and it becomes, you know, yeah. almost an event. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I agree, and I mean, to me, the public should be we gotta okay to come okay. in as well. Okay. What's that, ma'am? We should allow the public to come in if they want to. Yeah, I, yeah. everything we do is public. Yeah. There's nothing we do that, you know, we're not doing anything under a rock. Now, well, we the could, applications we could put are them, public. We could yeah. say, we could have them vote. <laughs> we could put it on their phones and That's true. let them vote on their phones, and no one would know what, who they <laughs> voted for. We could. Yeah, I mean, Who you, votes? What's that? The public. The public. That way we don't have to make the decision. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I think, I think if I'm we do it. Yeah. If it's your decision, it's got to be open meeting. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. we are giving away the money. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird deal for government to be in. I didn't say it's not fun, and I didn't say it's not going to be useful. But I think we need to make the decision because so we're doing it, you know? Selected body. Okay. If you're going to beat a government with a heart, well, you, you know, you got to feel it. Okay. So, sure. like I said, I, I know we can't decide all of this tonight. Yes, sir. For Do you sure. want us to email you our thoughts on yeah, this? Yeah, sure, sure. How you want to handle this? Yeah, e email me. Take this and email. Yeah, 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 email back your thoughts. Uh, yeah. That's and uh, yeah, five thousand would be pretty fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Might have to be more. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do yeah. fifty projects. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sounds good. I'm about to say, yeah, we might not be okay, able to do Okay, what what projects. what am I missing? <laughs> For sure, we should agree we go up it. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that it's just too many. Let me share something with y'all that sure. we did a while back when we had Western Business Association, uh -huh. when Southern Mutual was yeah. putting loans out in the community. Yeah. We couldn't find 10 people to get $25,000 each. Had okay. to do it. it was a loan. It was a... Uh, Interesting. It was a... Uh, yeah. Monica Luke came and helped us with the business plan and all of that kind of stuff. People hard to find. 50 is a big number. Big number. Okay. Well, thirty is almost. I think it's too big for what we can handle with my staff. It, well, that's why I said that it's too big for your staff, and it's also, again, if you open it up, when then that was those loans were for disenfranchised communities as well. So this might be a little better since it's all over the city, and it's for disadvantaged businesses. You know, if we did twenty-five businesses, that'd be six thousand dollars. Well, I can tell you that the from the women in business event. I've already had ten people ask about the micro loans. Oh, I'm sure, and that was a good that was a good event. And he had a lot of participation, and yeah. that was something really good. So, I'm sure those same people are gonna say, "Wait a minute, y'all giving away a grant? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, that loan." <laughs> you know, what I've taken away is we need a slim choice of categories so that we cut we down this money to pay the grant. We cut down what we are offering for what reason, right. and then we cut the number. And this money needs to be spent by a certain time, right? Or given away. Yeah, I have to commit it, so we have to select before this year is up. Let's say it's 25, okay? we got to select our 25 participants this year. We have till the end of 26 to spend it, you know? But we have to be committed that here, federal government, this is our plan. This is our 25 people that are going to be in the plan. Boom. We have to do that with one block at a time. We have to do that with the demo grant. We have, like I said, four of these. Uh, we have to do that with the, I'm going to meet with them next week, I think, with uh, SLCC for the little scholarships we give. So all of this, by the time the year's up, we got to turn in a report that tells us, you know, who we are partnering with. Right. 
And I will say that the STEM thing went very well. They have another one coming up. Oh, it did. Yeah. It did. No, that, 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 that made a mark. We gave them 100000 Yeah, that and made that, a mark. Yeah, that money. Now, there was easy. We gave it to one entity, the school board. They put it on. Yeah. You know, like I said, these that are we're really trying to help in the community, you know, I, I am realizing and feel the pressure of how much work this is going to, you know, going to be. And if I was only doing one, it'd be fine. But we have four of these, you know, to put together. So we should probably have them... And I know I'm that tech person, but we should probably have them upload the information first so that we can review it before they come in front of us. Yes, okay. yes, that, oh, that's why. Google that's what this was do, uh, Google Doc. And yeah. so once we flesh this out, which I can't do without your input, that's exactly mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that we can weed through because there'll be some that we know they don't meet the criteria. Right, and that we can. So yeah, you can't. Yeah. So that when we come, everybody has a you know is on the even playing field of having a chance. Yeah, and you measure one against the other on the same criteria. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we could get a summary or, or information on what the money's restricted for. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's some things that disadvantage the whole community and some things that disadvantage just question. particular people. You know, so I think we need to figure out what what's our target here. Okay. And and, and yeah, that's going to depend on what's permitted. Well, we're talking about uh, a small business, though. We're yes, not talking about a conglomerate uh, like, say, you <laughs> that's been in yeah, business 53 lie. years <laughs> yeah. or a million dollar enterprise, yeah. you know, yeah. next to you. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about somebody who, who's basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> struggling. Oh, I'm somebody who, I'm feeling who's a certain doing way here. Use it. Who's, <laughs> Laura, you might be off the concert. That's a good possibility. <laughs> That could be that could be possible, but you know, it, I think like somebody who has a a, a business uh, screening shirts, you know, and, and it's in their house or whatever, and they need a new piece of equipment or something mm -hmm. to take it to the next level and and maybe then get to a building per se or you know put a or building on the side of the house. house. Yeah, yeah, you know that kind of thing is what I think we're looking for. Yes. For them to kind of expand and, and give them something that they need that would help the business thrive a little bit more. And maybe the 20 cutoff is high, 20 employees? That's real high. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking that big. I was thinking, you know. Well, it says do you have more than 20. I know. Well, we yeah, we took this. Piece of equipment. This is our example. No more sell. than 20, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, but that's too large. You got, yeah. you got well, some big I mean, business. I don't know that 20, 20 people is a pretty big business. Yeah. It right? is. It's a big business. It's yeah. a big business. Yeah. yeah. So, no, that um, needs to be lower. Five. Yeah. Five. yeah. Five. You make a bigger five. difference. Five. You make a bigger five. difference five. with smaller businesses. Yes, and I realize that. That's what I had yeah. said earlier is that I'm not looking. How do we have to monitor this for after? Do we have to monitor it for a period of three, four years after? The money's going to get spent, and we're going to monitor the, how the money was spent, and that's the but end. You're going to yeah, buy the item. we can do with it yeah, once we've spent the be, money. Yeah, once we well, spend the money. Tr you know, tracking is that's more employees, more work for the city. I mean, no, just we, like Dan said, yeah, but we don't say, have, say we, yeah, we, we, we give Barlow 5000 he buys a barber chair, and then next year he sells it. I mean, so? I mean, just. I mean, we, we don't have to care, though. But no, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, just to make it out. Our responsibility ends after we spend the money. That's what I want to know. After we spend the money, Okay, that's fine. Well, if he decides to sell it, then that's on him. No, but I mean, that's what I want to know. Our response, we don't have to track it for three years. Oh, no, no, we just got to spend it. We got to spend it right. Yes, we do. We do. And we would have our proof because we yes. have the receipt. Yeah. And also, I was listening to Ms. Ledbetter. I think, is is it a, and let's say we go with $6,000. Okay. Max. Or maybe more. Look like to me it, it should be an up is, two. Because yeah. if one small business just needs a $400 machine, then we shouldn't exclude that small business. Or tell them to go shop. Right. Yeah, I, think, I, think you, I think we <laughs> Like said. a screen. She made me think of that when she yeah. did the T-shirt thing. Yeah. And, you know, it really depends on how many applies. Right. Yeah. So if you well, only if you have only 10, 10, you give 10 more money, you get 10. then you can have 20. Yeah. yeah. We'd be 15000 I so, mean, yeah. You get from a low to high amount, say, five, you know. I think I need a minimum so that I know I'm yeah, doing I think you do. a minimum, yeah. a maximum of transactions, oh. yeah. of projects, like we yeah. call them. So, just, you know. so one thing, um, when we think about businesses, y'all have to also remember that, you know, there's a lot of online businesses that are not traditional businesses, but they are businesses. Uh -huh. And so we shouldn't exclude those type of businesses from getting the funds if they have something 
that would help to grow their business, like more marketing, whatever. Because a lot of kids are young people today, they don't make money the traditional way. They have online presences like they might have some sort of Instagram thing that they do or a YouTube channel that they have or whatever. I'm just saying that there's a, we need to make sure that we understand that because young people don't make money the way we did. They don't have little part-time jobs. They, do, they go to the social media and make money there. Lots of them. And a lot of money sometimes. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying, I, no, I mean, no, I know this for a no, fact. Thinking, what about occupation licenses? <laughs> yeah. We're going to require those? We, we had originally put in there but, that you but, had to, to, to know that you were a business, you had occupation. You had to have an occupation license. Well, not necessarily, though, because it could be an online business. Most, most legitimate online businesses have occupation licenses. They have. They might have a. They might have an EIN number yeah. because they're registered with the Secretary of State, but they don't necessarily have an occupational. Taxes? Do they pay taxes? It depends on what type of business that they have. Like some people selling on Amazon. I know somebody that was selling stuff, and they had to go through everything online. Okay. okay. Well, I know that some of them. Had, had to be in good standing sales, with tax, the state. But what if you're a sole proprietor? There's no good standing yeah. for a sole proprietor. You don't have to. You don't. Yeah, Those things don't true. apply. Suppose you're a nonprofit. You file with the Secretary of State. So suppose you're a nonprofit. You're not a so business. we need to flush this out. You no, can be. You can be. You can be listed at, with the Secretary of State yes. as a but, as a business. But as a as a, as a nonprofit. Yeah. You listed Secretary as a nonprofit. Secretary of State. If you listed with a nonprofit profit, if you listed with Secretary of State, then you legit. Yeah. Because you got to follow yeah. all the guidelines. And you yeah. may or may not have a tax an EIN. No. Right. And you right. would. Yeah. Well, you some don't. It's just. That, this is why you gave it to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all doing exactly what, as y'all always do, exactly yeah. what yeah. I was hoping of. Put your heads in the game because it's, it's complicated. No, yeah. it is. So give us a deadline. Okay, give us a deadline. When you need the, when you need the information, Bob? Uh, probably soon because um, no, we're talking well, May. Yeah. I would like to move on to the next one. So we our next meeting is in three weeks because we've got like a bye week. You know, we got an extra week. So uh, <laughs> in three weeks... Between now and three weeks for the next meeting, I would like so, some email input. So on the next agenda, you want to have another discussion item with changes? Yeah, I'm going to put it on there. Actually, no, you want to the vote for it. Introduction. I'll put it on introduction. Introduction. Okay. All right. So in three weeks, this one would get introduced. And then I'm going to bring you another one that we'll do, you know, two or three weeks later. That's enough time. So yeah. are you going to send no. any emails of the suggestions of the council? Prior to the meeting, yeah. What so I'm going to do is take all y'all if it's okay with y'all. Yeah. I'm going to take all your suggestions, and Laney and I are going to put them all together and kick it around. I'll kick it around with the rest of my staff, and I'm going to come up with a new version. Now I can't I promise you that I'm going to fit every one of your ideas, but right. you know, I'm going to be duplicates on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will try to get them all in where they were, and if they conflict with each other, I'm going to pick one. I mean, that's yeah. my job. So I'm going to come back with a document that is a, uh, you know, I'll be influenced by every one of yours. I can't say that I'll use every one of yours. And I'll put together a new document and bring it to the meeting to introduce. Okay. And then we do our game like we always do. What do we do? We talk about it. We modify. We sit here and run our process. And we end up with something even better when we leave. So two, two questions. One, can we get a soft copy of this? Electronic copy. Sure. Okay, um, so because it's easier to kind of yeah. go in and, and yeah. okay. Um, second question is, can we get your updated version before the meeting mm -hmm. so we have time oh, to look definitely, at it? Oh, definitely, definitely, okay. definitely. Yeah, because yeah, I got something that we'll be in your be, packet for sure. Gonna be before, before, yeah. before, I got something yeah. we'd be screaming about, you yeah. know, we, or I might have something Way that before that. Yeah. I might have two different council people, which is usually the case, with very strong opinions, and I got to figure ah. out what I'm going to do. <laughs> Modifications uh, is you know what I mean? I can't believe that. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe. Have, have an occupational, because it don't take long to get one. No. Have I don't know that that has to be a requirement, though. I think it should be. But it could be. I think yeah. it should be. It doesn't. Because yeah. it it's depends not. on what kind of business. I, I mean, yeah. I'll look at the tech businesses right, and I'll come back with some more information. But, because if they don't have to have one, then we shouldn't make that a requirement. But, I but mean, they don't cost much. They, that's the point I'm making. They don't, they don't cost, cost, cost much, much and they don't take time. Yes, okay, but then if I my business has been going for a year and yeah. I go get an occupational license that said I got it yesterday, I don't look like a qualified business for this program. Yeah. No, but yeah. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make you qualified. Get, we're going to make you qualified. That's what I'm Because you're approved <laughs> by your EIN. Yeah. In, yeah. So, so if you don't have an occupational license, but you've been... Raise your hand. Business, <laughs> you know, but what about a sole proprietor? I don't have either one of those. Well, 
So I don't. So hey, uh, proprietors don't have to have. I, I don't like to use the ham. They do. Oh, he about to wrap up. They do if they're in business. So for okay. I'm the a re- sole proprietor. The reason I'm asking the question is when we got the COVID grant stuff coming through. Uh-huh. Half of those people on that list were. Not, Said they had businesses in New Iberia and they didn't have that's licenses. Exactly, right? That's why yeah. they should have it. Yeah. Exactly yeah. What you said. Occupational and, and, licenses and quote part, unquote a business license. Part of what that. we're doing is trying to help the businesses that are in New Iberia to help New Iberia. That's, pet peeve, that's the other thing. Remember, we got to make sure we say you this thing is still on. This is within <laughs> the city of New Iberia. Oh, it this is. is not it the Paris. No, this is just in case the businesses in the city. But at the same time, we want the businesses that help the city and that produce something that's good for the city. You know, okay. I mean, if you're just doing business in Europe on the Internet, you're not really doing it. I'm not being ugly, and I know that's how young people make their money. You're not doing anything that's part of our community. Well, you don't know that because, you know, I might be watching those videos. I'm, maybe I'm learning something from that person. I, I just feel like if the, if the business is within the city limits, then it should be considered. We might not pick it, but if it's within the city limits, they should have an opportunity to apply because it is a business. I mean, so what if my product is being sold somewhere else? I'm spending my money in New Iberia. I'm, I'm paying those taxes in New Iberia. Oh, we're getting in the weeds now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, you don't we're just. We're getting in the weeds now. <laughs> no, that's not the weeds. Taxes. No, no, yeah. that's not the weeds. What I'm saying is that <laughs> you shouldn't say because my business. Uh, my target audience is not necessarily in the city of New Iberia or if, if it's in Mississippi or if it's in Jamaica, that my business is legitimate because my whatever proceeds I'm getting, revenue from that business, I'm spending in New Iberia. Same so why should job. I? Same with my job. Every proceed I get, I spend in New Iberia. That's my point. So That's why, why would my... To the weeds. We're talking about... All I'm talking about is occupational Well, Freddie and I license. were talking about something different. No, no, but I'm talking about occupational license. I know, but yeah. Freddie and I were talking about something different. Yeah, we're having too many conversations. Well, that's why yeah. we're having a little suggestion. We're going to send yeah, that's everybody. That's exactly right. So, you want to favor so, people who employ people. If you can prove people. you in business yeah. Yeah. without an occupational license, then you, you qualify for that year and just get your occupational license. So, I get that. You and I are on the same page. What Freddie and I were talking about, we'll Freddie the, we'll made a comment about we'll if you're page. selling to people in Europe oh, yeah, that, that, you know, that's not necessarily helping New Iberia, but that's not fair because, yes, it is helping New Iberia because my revenue is being spent in New Iberia. So I just don't want us to, to say those people don't qualify. Okay, okay. Uh, point taken. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I was just yeah, trying to explain it more than what I was saying when I, I was But saying. I understand, but they yeah. only be able to brag on their product and their work in Europe. That's not true. No. It's all good, man. It's all no. good. Maybe that wasn't the best example, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll Freddie, get there. No more examples. We'll get there. Get no more examples. All right. Thank y'all. You know, it's been a long meeting. Uh, again. Again. I miss my uh, council Although these artists. are always very, very nice when we have a good discussion. Well, Didi, when you're in Europe, it was short. Uh, and I, I will start with you on and, and people remarks. were missing me, right? Oh, we all missed it. We were, it was they quick, people though. people calling looking for me. Quick. Those meetings was quick. I had some early... Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm picking over. She knows that. All right, think about okay. y'all, because y'all know that ain't going to stop me. Hey. Uh, uh, no, man, I just want to uh, thank, I know the administration been doing so much. It's like every weekend that something's happening in New Iberia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At the festival this weekend, last week, I mean, every weekend. Yep. It says yep. a lot. And I, I know you have a lot to do with it. The administration has a lot to do with it. And I want to thank the... Uh, the police department, they got to fulfill their, their weekends to do this. It's just great. I mean, it's amazing. We had someone come in from out of town and visit my wife. It's like, do y'all have this every weekend? She just happened to come in when everything yeah, was yeah. happening. But it is a good thing, and it's a good thing for our economy because people go to the stores, people go to the restaurants. And I want to applaud you because people can't say there's nothing to do in New Iberia. That's right. It might be different. Then down the road, but there's something to do if you want to do it. So I want to applaud the efforts that you and the effort that the administration puts to make that happen well, and to a, make it happen easy. It's a community, and you it know, takes all of us. And, well, you, know. you, you welcome them. With, I'm telling you, it's so easy to make it happen, and thank you for doing that because in the past we had some issues for anything to do in New Iberia. It, it, was, it, was, it was hard to do, and you open that up, and it's really it's showing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.
So I just would like to say thank you to the mayor for um, allowing me to take his place in uh, Alharon de la Torre, Spain. Um, it was an amazing experience. Um, I had a great time. Um, I got to walk in the parades. I, what I didn't know at the start of this thing was that I was the honored guest. <laughs> so um, it was it was amazing. The people were extremely nice. Um, they were very welcoming. Uh, when I was walking in the parade, people were like, "Who is that?" You know, I'm like the only black person in the parade. <laughs> 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 so people from? just weren't expecting to see me, and so people were looking at me like, who's that? <laughs> it was actually quite funny, but they were very sweet to me, very welcoming. Our host was amazing. Uh, he planned a very full, pa I mean, the, the agenda for our itinerary was packed. This guy had us doing something until um, 10, 11 o'clock at night. So we'd leave at 9 in the morning. And, you know, we come back to the room long enough to take a shower for the evening event. And then we go to dinner at 9, nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. They don't eat early. Okay. One time we got to the um, restaurant at 8.30. We were the only people in there. By 10 o'clock, there's no tables available. They eat late at night. Uh, so it was, but it was fun. We had a flamenco um, dance. Uh, they had a uh, performance for us. I mean, it was just an amazing experience. I, I'm sorry the mayor missed it, but I hope I did him justice. I really enjoyed myself. You did. So you thank did. you all very much. You did all the reports, much. and everybody said, you know. We, we saw was, you have a picture. We knew you were there. It was <laughs> good. A it was good. You did a great job. You thank did. you for doing that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Neighborhood Watch is going to be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the Sliman. Come on out. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Yes, sir. So just, um... Just a fruit for thought. I mean, we, we've all voted and in, in, in invested in the new Pepperplex, and I've been out there several times, and it's amazing to see the amount of cars, the amount of activity out there that's packing the facility. It's getting well well used, and I'm excited about it. And then for the record, Richard Romero did beat me in the tricycle races this weekend. So and when he comes, he did beat me, so I participated in the tricycle race. It was a very fun event. Like Dan said, there's always something to do, and uh, there was no potholes in the circle, Dan. So it was all good, smooth sailing. Yes, it, it was fun. People enjoyed it, and I think it's a lot to build on in the future for the park. Thank you. Yes, sir. Don't forget we got some voting things on the ballot. Uh, please go out and vote. You can vote early this week, I think through Saturday. So uh, anytime we got a chance to vote, show that we care, go do it. I don't. Re I don't really don't have a lot. Uh, I don't have a lot, so I'll pass. Cool. Thank you. So just kind of piggybacking off Mr. Ricky with the Pepperplex, uh, rec ball has started, and uh, the only complaint I have now is that we need more parking because we have so many people involved in rec ball, which is a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really thriving over there. Um, I'm hoping we can host more tournaments. I've only known of one so far that we hosted and got really good reviews. So it's time to to get these people coming to the Pepperplex over the weekends. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Been a long meeting, so I'll keep it short. Uh, I enjoyed this meeting very much. We, we, we continue to do really good work. Um, we did do our first term of the Pepperplex. It was successful. Um, we will be getting additional parking with the next round of, our, of money that's coming from the state, from Capital Outlay. We have a new multi-use pavilion, and next to that we're going to do uh, increased parking. Um, so that's coming in the plan if we're successful to get the money that we've asked for this coming year if that happens with the new capital outlay we would end up probably doing even more parking uh, because we realize which is a good problem to have but uh, over time I think you'll see that project continue um, and like I said it's been a long meeting so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn thank you